Slow down, drop you dropping too fast. <laughs> Slow down. You got that water. Drop nation. Wow. Wow. The Book of Mormon and other testament of Jesus. <laughs> this is a stylized picture of JC as he appeared to the indigenous tribes of South America. Love that. I love that, man. Stylized picture of JC as he appeared to the Nagas in America. <laughs> Only the more, man. Only the more, man. Only the more, man. Hey, hello. Wow, let's get it. We're going to have a great time. We're going to feature some Ethereum uh, natural by law. We're going we're gonna to feature some Cootie Mayo. We're going to talk some Omex. We're going to talk. Um, you know, some of this JC hijack, get back into it like it's the first time, you know. We're going to talk dragons. We're going to talk dragons. We're going to talk OJ, man. <laughs> we're going to talk a lot of things in this drive, man, because, you know, we're going to do it like only only Drop Nation could do. Let's get it, man. JC, Mesoamerican name. Quetzalcoatl means literally feathered snake or plumbed, plumed serpent, or we know. We just talking dragon. Monaga is it's, it's the fifth wave. Fifth wave just getting started, by the way. You know what I mean? Uh, it might seem like you've been in the fifth wave. Monaga, you just getting started in the fifth wave, man. And, you know, Pluto's, you know, headed into Aquarius, they say. We're going to talk some Pluto. You know, I don't know what it all means, but I'm going to listen and see what they're saying and see if we can approach it with a dragon flit eye perspective. This is JC as he appeared to the indigenous tribes of South America. Come on, boss. We know we're talking Joshua. And we know that you got to choose your Joshua. You choose the indigenous indigenous kind, Quetzalcoatl, Joshua under Moshe, Joshua. Or you choose the phantom, the reflection, the duplication. And then you let yourself take the wheel. Hey, up to the car. JC, Mesoamerican name, Quetzalcoatl. So we talking JC or we talking Joshua? They gotta make they gotta make sense out of it. Somebody said, nah, man, Jesus, his name was Yeshua. So you can't be talking Jesus because his name is Yeshua. Look, I don't care if you call him Skittles. I don't care if you say Skittles is the son of God. If you're talking the same story as we're talking in the New Test, we're talking the same uh so-called supernaga that's walking on water. Yahweh, I don't care what Hebrew twist you put on JC. It's the same story in Gospels, right? The Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're talking the same JC. That's the phantom. Now, Joshua, who led you to the promised land, is who the Mormons are actually calling Quetzalcoatl. They just put the JC on it, the Jesus on it, just to, you know, hijack ain't never late. You got to take it a step further and say, which Joshua, man, because JC don't even transliterate it to Yeshua in reality. J Jesus in Greek does not transliterate to Yeshua in Hebrew. Stop playing, man. Cut it. Cut it. I'm talking Jesus. Like the Spaniards say, hey, Zeus, right? Stop it. We're talking Zeus. So their Zeus ain't your Joshua. <laughs> and their peace Ain't your Shalawan. Shalawan to the cons, though. And a feathered snake or serpent is not a, you know, a dragon, right? A serpent is not a dragon. And a dragon is not a serpent. To the Aztecs, the feathers of the Quetzalcoatl or the Quetzal bird, the rainbow Quetzal bird, right? Were a symbol of JC. Stop it, man. No, buddy. <laughs> nah, man, you're talking about the rainbow dragon. You know, Genesis, I'll put my rainbow in the sky as a reminder of our bond. 
that I won't flood the earth no more. Right. So choose your Joshua. We're reading this with a dragonfly perspective. So it should read to the Aztecs, the feathers of the Quetzalcoatl bird or dragon were assembled. Joshua who led you to the promised land, who Moses laid his hands on, right? We got multiple priests, kings, or prestors. We got one shepherd forever, Kandawi. And even in the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, Joshua is prophesying about David having the scepter and holding down the kingdom, holding up the kingdom, so... There ain't no beef between the real Joshua and Dawi. We're talking the same flow to lead you back to that water. Drop Nation got the water. Now, Kawaro also means twin brother. Okay. Okay. Well, we know it means dragon. So, ping pow. Thus, the name gets Kawaro is understood by Mormon scholars to mean the precious twin, the image of the resurrected personages of Calvary's. <laughs> you see the do you peep the conjecture with the dragon block perspective they talking that they brought in twin brother when Kawado clearly means serpent or dragon so kids of Kawado, we're talking about the rainbow dragon not the precious twin of resurrection like they're trying hard to bring it back to zeus that's why they switched you from joshua to jesus man Hey, hell Zeus, right? Anthropologists at BYU know that the appellation twin brother also signifies to the Aztecs that the morning and evening star are one and the same. Mm. The morning star is also called Lucifer. Back to Zeus, right? That train's never late, just as hell Zeus and the kids of Quattro are bound and similar to. It's similar because you're making a reflection of phantom and a duplication. Similar does not mean exact. Huh? They made a similar savior story, but it is not exact. As we know, the most high over everything is our only savior. Isaiah 43. Kitsukwado is the name of Joshua, who they call Yeshua. But there's two Yeshua's. <laughs> or Hawashuas. And in, they ain't talking no Greek. Jesus Hijack. As recorded by the Aztecs, the Maya and the Quiches referred to Jesus <laughs> as Kuku Khan. We're talking Joshua. So every time they put in their Jesus, you know we're talking our Joshua, not their fake Joshua or fake Yeshua or Jesus. See, they worship JC. When the creator come back and pop off, they going to bypass the creator and say, hey, move out the way, most high. <laughs> Where's Jesus? <laughs> I thought Jesus is God. So there can't be a separate Jesus and a separate God if Jesus is God in the flesh. There can't be Jesus coming and God coming, right? So they're only looking for Jesus. <laughs> wow. But Hawa's our only savior. So they're going to bypass Hawa and be like, where's JC? They're going to bypass the most high over everything to look for Zeus. That's how much they love Jesus, man. They don't care about the creator. They care about JC, who has nothing to do with the creator. These are brainwash, you know, hyper, hijack, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hello, well, let's go, man. So the Kuku Khan or the Kuku Mons is all referring to the Quetzalcoatl or the Hawashiwa Rainbow Dragon under Moshe, who in Deuteronomy 34, Mo Moses lays his hands on Joshua. Mormon scriptures unearthed in the most ancient of ruins of Teota Hawaka, right? Because they got Hawa. And all these titles, H-U-A, is H-A-W-A, right? Hawa or Hawa Khan. Well, that needs no introduction. Khan, <laughs> C's or K. So 
We're talking about the Khan, the priesthood of Hawa. The Teal is the Tao, which is where you're getting the cross, which is the last letter of the Hebrew. Now they say that this predicts Jesus' first coming as a state God clan. Come on. This predicts Joshua as the rainbow dragon. We're talking about the feather dragon, not the serpent. Feather dragon. This is often cited by, or yeah, Mormon scholars as further evidence that the Book of Mormon is true. All right, all right. And later we're going to get into some of the fallacies, the problems. <laughs> Love to mormonthink.com. We're gonna get back at this. Just just understand. They have an issue with their own positions. They got an issue with their own positions. Because we're talking Americas. LDS church members are taught that the Book of Mormon is scripture as well as true record of the inhabitants of the Americas. And the inhabitants of the Americas are the copper color races found here. So, of course, they twisted it. They hijacked it. And we're going <laughs> to, again, pop off our series called Morm Mormons Digging Deeper, right? <laughs> and uh, just know when we talk Mormons Digging Deeper, we're only talking about the indigenous cause, the inhabitants of the Americas. And we got to dissect what they are translating to understand the tribe, the tribal dragonfly perspective of the Nagas in America. They say from 2200 BC to 420 AD, which is interesting because that leads you right up to the Kaleos connection, 500, 600, 700, Sylvanus, though Texas, all that, right? Although it serves primarily as a religious text, it is to be interpreted literally, literally as being an actual historical record. It is to be interpreted literally as a record of history of inhabitants of the Americas. Historical record of the inhabitants of the ancient Americas. Or the Amaru Khans. Some LDS believe that there is some archaeological evidence supporting the Book of Mormon Many know there's little or no evidence and continue to believe in the book's authenticity despite these challenges. Critics cite numerous problems with the text that indicate it is of more modern origin, such as anachronisms, DNA evidence, lack of archaeological evidence, linguistic problems, etc. For the introduction to the Book of Mormon, it is a record of God's dealings with the ancient inhabitants of the Americas. <laughs> so, whereas the Bible ain't really sp specific as to uh, where this promised land is, we had to uncover this together to understand that America is the old world, right? The ancient world. So, we can now look at the Bible and Place Joshua, Moses, all this happening in the Americas, my not. Go get the drop, right? But the Mormons, man, they just come out and tell you, yo, this is all about the Americas. So what's the discrepancy? What's the why is the Bible want to put you in the Middle East and Mormons putting you right here? And why is Joseph and them conquering Utah and, and coming over here, right? Because they know this is promised land, my life. It is a record of Hawa's dealings with the ancient inhabitants of the Americas and contains the fullness of the everlasting gospel. Members are encouraged to focus on the spiritual value. Now, this is the LDS position. All right? Focus on the spiritual value of the Book of Mormon instead of the historical aspects. On July 29, 1978, the Deseret News published an article in the church news section called Geography Problems that actively discouraged members from studying the history historicity of the Book of Mormon because such effort would prove fruitless that deferring theories regarding Book of Mormon geography would undermine faith, quote unquote, and that any theories put forth by scholars were nothing more than personal speculations. Here's the overview of the critics position of the LDS position.
LDS critics maintain that the BON, Book of Mormon, is a work of fiction created in the 19th century. Critics do not accept that the BON relates any actual history of real people who came to the Americas. Mm. So you got to dodge a hijack on the LDS position and the critics position. <laughs> you got to dodge both versions of Hijack City to get the Dragonfly perspective because we know we're talking about actual history of real people, which are the so-called Negro, primarily <laughs> when we're talking these Hebrews in America and the ancient ones in America, Antarctica, and everywhere else on the Earth plane. Now, critics do not accept that BOM. Book of Mormon relates an actual history of real people who came to the Americas and were still smelting, chariot driving, Christ worshiping, temple building people, multiplying into millions. So they don't really want to give. Here's the drop, man. They don't want to give no authenticity to high tech nagas in America that are already steel smelting or they got swords right chariot driving like they don't they want you to be tp indians dancing around the tps with no technology right but when you factor in technology now you're talking cartoon type stuff right cities of gold type stuff cities of gold oh, high tech nagas so whether you steel smelting or or a calcum smelting <laughs> chariot driving or Golden condor flying, right? Christ worshiping, or we're talking Hebrews, right? Because they they had to bring their Christ <laughs> to hijack these Hebrews. Temple building, mounds are everywhere. Cholola, right? <laughs> Mexico, South America, everywhere. Temple building, pyramid building. People multiplying into millions, yet left absolutely no trace of their existence. Um, why do they call you black? Why Why do I got to say Negro people instead of Hebrew people? Because Negro, you're going to understand at least um, a picture. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. You know, it's, it's going to make it a little more specific, but of course, within these Negro people, we got all these different tribes of so-called Negro people, right? So Negro doesn't, all Negroes are Hebrew and all Hebrews are Negro. Or <laughs> more, more correctly, uh, all Hebrews are Negro. <laughs> but not all Negroes are Hebrew. And we know that, of course, you know, we cover the entire color spectrum in our DNA, right? So let's not uh, argue about the obvious, but let's see clearly together, be unified in the code because no one has to prove their tribe, man. You don't got to prove to me that you are Ephraim and Manasseh and Judah. Like, just keep the code, man, because it don't matter if you're Ephraim, Manasseh, or Judah, if you ain't code keeper. If you ain't code keeping, that's vanity. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter. Your melanin, your melanin don't matter if you're out of cold. Don't you understand? Your dragon can't even fly without breath and without security. Huh? Kundalini or kum. K-U-M, Q-U-M, kum. To rise. That dragon got to rise. You can't rise without the frequency. And you don't have no frequency as a tribe without a cold. Without the cold. No archaeological, linguistic, genetic, or any other evidence of Hebrew culture in America. Whoa. They they must not be watching Cootie Mayo. <laughs> and we got some Cootie Mayo drop. And, you know, look, be patient with us cons, man. Like, no one got it exactly right. No one was saying they perfect. But we're given enough evidence <laughs> for you to surf the wave and put your dragonfly perspective together. And hopefully... It's as simple as being most high over everything. 
I don't need you to believe everything I'm saying. I just need you to be most high over everything so we can activate, so we can be unified in the cult. We know this archaeological Los Lunas stone, Los Lunas, uh, New Mexico got the Decalogue stone, right? The Ten Commandments right there. <laughs> Linguistic, you know, just read up on the James Adair flow. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> genetic, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, brother. Talk to Kanye. <laughs> Yeezy. <laughs> Yeezy said it. Who these, who Judah is, right? Or any evidence of Hebrew culture in America has ever been found to support the existence of such a people portrayed in the Book of Mormon. Well, we know we're talking Negro people. The book also contains numerous anachronisms like horses, elephants, wheat, barley. Remember, an anachronism refers to, you know, something that is related to like the future or, you know, something that shouldn't be there. You know what I mean? Like they think horses shouldn't be in America, elephants and all this stuff, wheat, barley still. But in Atlantis, in America, we have everything. In the old world, we got everything. So stop playing. They just rewrote history to make this sound like a new world. They couldn't give you old world things and still call this the new world. If they came over here and found horses, elephants, lions, and yada, 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 and, and, and all these Negro people, <laughs> they can't say it's an old world, right? They have to say it's a new world if they hide it. The scientists say it didn't exist. The scientists. Who are the scientists? Who are your experts? And who are your fact checkers, boss? About the Americas, boss. All right, we're going to come back. Let's talk dragon. And let's start flying. Let's talk Chinese dragon. And I have to story a Lego. Sky above as the watery depths below, the Chinese dragon is one of the world's most globally recognized monsters. Their behavior could be described as benevolent, but their appearance can still inspire fear and awe. These dragons, or long, as they're called in Chinese mythology, have been a crucial component of religion, culture, mythology, and folklore in China for thousands of years. Been a crucial component of religion. Take the CCO. Hold on. I gotcha. Fire, fear, and awe. These dragons, or long, as. Bang. So when you breathe, you breathe through your lung. We're talking breath. What does the dragon have to do to breathe fire? It has to. <gasps> Wow! To breathe that fire. To see clearly. As they're called in Chinese mythology, have been a crucial component of religion, culture, mythology, and folklore in China for thousands of years. The dragon is one of mythology and folklore. Rainbow dragon, right? I can't make this up. Hold on, hold on, man. Let me get that. Let me get it. That's tight, that's tight, that's tight. We're talking Quetzalcoatl, we're talking Rainbow Dragon. We'll get there, we'll get there. We're talking Quetzals, right? Okay. Or in China for thousands of years. The dragon is one of the four benevolent animals in Chinese mythology and one of the 12 members of the Chinese Zodiac. Mm -hmm. And those are only small parts of their influence. Hey, we in the year of the dragon, 2024, Phineas crisscrossing on your head ball, solar eclipse, April 8th. New Year, Hebrew New Year, Baruch Passar. <laughs> Let's go. Dragons played a major role in China's history. They were both creators and destroyers and controlled the elements. Mm -hmm. So what was it about the Chinese dragon that made it such a central figure in Chinese culture? I'm Dr. Emily Zarka. And this is Monstrum. The dragon was born in China a long time ago and has appeared throughout ancient and modern history. A jade dragon discovered from Hongshan culture dates to around 6,000 years ago, and dragon heads appear on oracle bones from 1300 BCE. More recently, Disney Shang-Chi gave us a beautiful and mythologically accurate representation of the creature. That's a pretty solid track record. 
Wang Fu, a Chinese historian and philosopher in the Eastern Han Dynasty, wrote that the dragon's unique appearance is actually a composite of many different animal features, and the list is long. Their heads are the same shape as a camel, their ears are like a bull, and they regard us with eyes similar to a hare, or a murderous demon, depending on the source. Atop their majestic heads grow the antlers of a stag. They have the- Or a murderous demon, right? So they always want to put that demon Satan title on our dragons, who they just said the Chinese consider benevolent. It's on the Zodiac, but it's the only thing on the Zodiac that's mythological. Stop it, man. They got the year of the rat, the year of the horse, everything else, but the dragon got to be fake because it scares the living daylights out the hijack. The writhing body of a snake and the well-armored belly of a clam. They have the feet of a tiger and the enormous talons of an eagle. Finally, covering their whole body are the protective scales of a carp. Some scholars believe that these various attributes evolved out of the influence of the disparate tribes that eventually unified into the China we know today. Others see them as emblematic of desirable human characteristics, or as a representative amalgamation of ancient spiritual totems. Hold up. T-Mobile built a 5G network so powerful. Oh, oh we talking 5 Jizzle? Hmm, we might gotta talk some 5 Jizzle, man. We might gotta. Hey, go hit up our Patreon. <laughs> I'll lay the link for you, cons. Hey, I have to my Patreon. Cons, let's go. Conceal a large pearl in their throat or chin. The pearl, often depicted in art as a glowing white disc in a dragon's claw or mouth, may represent the sun, the moon, or the earth. Mm. Or maybe it's just a giant jewel. Regardless, the dragon's ability to hold the precious orb represents immense power. Even the number of scales on the Chinese dragon's body carries important significance. The number is said to be 117. But Come on, boss. I'm out of here, boss. I know we just started, boss, but I'm out of here, boss. One plus one plus seven. Hey, can y'all leave a comment and let me know? Let's do some simple addition. What's one plus one plus seven? Just leave that in the comments because we've been talking about this, right? What's four plus three plus two? <laughs> yeah, we in the nine code. Which in traditional Chinese philosophy and religion represents a perfect balance of yin, negative essence, and yang, positive essence. We in the nine, we in the nine code. Do you see clearly? Is it a six or is it a nine, boss? Because of this natural duality, while usually compassionate, the dragon can be malicious as well. Or even... Numbers 21, it'd be fiery flying serpents as a curse from the creator. Or Psalms 18, <laughs> David is praying to the creator, come down with dragon fire, fire out of his mouth, smoke out of his nostrils. A dragon can give you Baruch, or a dragon can be a curse, depending on what the creator wants. And what you deserve. You decide, my lad. And just really invested in politics. In the 17th century, scholar Se Jiaozhou's text, The Five Assorted Offerings, tells the story of his own encounter with dragons. According to Se, while traveling by sea at 10 years old with his uncle on a diplomatic mission, they were suddenly plagued by wind, rain, hail, thunder, and lightning. Three dragons surrounded them. At first, everyone was terrified of the extraordinary creatures, but an elder remarked that they must be there to hear the emperor's message. They interact with gods and immortals in the heavens. Even without wings, they can fly through the air. They are shapeshifters, capable of taking on any size or shape, including human form. They can turn invisible at will, are highly intelligent, and in some stories, they can even speak. The Sound like UFOs and aliens, right? But now they give you little green men. Little green man. But extra terra is more land and extraterrestrial <laughs> are these energies from other planes, right? The deep meanings attributed to Chinese dragons are ancient, so much so that their exact origins are largely lost to the past. The evidence that we do have, however, suggests dragons were a universal facet in all early cultures in China, mm -hmm. even though traditions and spiritual significance differed. 
In the Guideways Through Mountains and Seas, an encyclopedic tome and Chinese bestiary penned between the 4th and 1st century BCE, the dragon appeared as a nature deity known as the God of Thunder, who uses his own belly to drum up echoing booms. There were even so-called dragon cults, religious groups that worshipped dragons and gave offerings to appease them. As aquatic, semi-divine beings, dragons control rainstorms, hail, wind, tornadoes, floods, and all bodies of water. Dragons helped explain the rain cycle during the Song dynasties, and were thus also said to bring thunder and lightning. This was an important development, because if humans could summon dragons, then they had a semblance of control over rain as well. During this same period, paintings of dragons dramatically increased. In ancient Chinese cosmology, there are four kinds of dragons. The celestial dragon, dragon of hidden treasure, the underground or underworld dragon, and spiritual dragon, who control rain and winds. But in other traditions, the taxonomy expands to nine, an auspicious number in Chinese numerology. And interestingly, <laughs> the same number of animals the dragon borrows its features from. Joining the classification system are the winged dragon. What's this number nine about? Let's hear that again. You know, the scales of a dragon, 711, <laughs> add up to nine. Nine, nine, nine. When you draw number nine, it's a spiral. It's not just a number. It's a portal. It's a spiral. The nine is the noon. In Hebrew, the noon is the seed. Let's go. Dragon, the horn dragon, the coiling dragon, the yellow dragon, and the numerology. And interestingly, the same number of animals the dragon borrows its features from, over rain as well. During this same period, paintings of dragons dramatically increased. In ancient Chinese cosmology, there are four kinds of dragons. The celestial dragon, dragon of hidden treasure, the underground or underworld dragon, and spiritual dragon, Cut. who control rain and winds. But in other traditions, the taxonomy expands to nine, an auspicious number in Chinese numerology, and interestingly, the same number of animals the dragon borrows its features from. Joining the classification Ooh. system are the winged dragon, the horned dragon, the coiling dragon, the yellow dragon, and the dragon king. The dragon king concept was only introduced after the arrival of Buddhism in China. When Buddhism came to the area, dragons were adopted as a symbol of enlightenment as well as royalty. Buddhism was then imported from China to Japan around the 7th century, and dragons came along with it. Dragons were later incorporated into Shintoism as well. The Shinto god Susanu was believed to have killed an eight-headed dragon, which certainly seems like a monster slayer story to me. In Chinese mythology, when one of the four poles that held up the sky collapsed, one of the disastrous consequences was great flooding brought on by the Black Dragon, a malevolent creature who could only be stopped by the mother goddess Nuwa. But other dragons are not so monstrous. After all, one of those world-building pillars was constructed by the Green Dragon, one of the deities of creation. And yet another creation story from the Bai peoples, when the world was created... Ain't this a year the Green Dragon, Tree Dragon, whatever you call it? What they got to do with creation? What's happening, my nana? The world-building pillars was constructed by the Green Dragon, one of the deities of creation. And yet an another creation story from the Bai peoples, when the world was created, a great golden dragon lay in slumber under the sea. When one of two warring suns dropped into the ocean, the sea began to boil. Awoken and enraged by this, the golden dragon swallowed the sun. It began to burn him, eventually bursting from his chest and becoming clouds, trees, flowers, grass, and animals of all kinds. So to sum it up, not all Chinese dragons are the same. They serve different purposes. Some are celestial, others belong to the river, some protect treasure, act as deities, or serve as a connection to the spiritual. Oh, and they can have human offspring, or more specifically, emperors. <laughs> this is one reason why Chinese dragons are intimately linked to imperial history. During the Han Dynasty to Qin Dynasty period, the great and powerful dragon became associated with emperors as a way to show the rulers had been divinely chosen. The first Han Emperor, known as the Yellow Emperor, was said to be the offspring of a human mother and a divine dragon. This supposed heritage trickled down to all elements of the emperor's authority, from their robes to their beds. Yellow or golden dragons were particularly revered by imperial powers and the five-clawed dragon became an official imperial symbol in the 14th century. 
Their claws represent the Emperor's power over the five elements – wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Eventually, everyone else was banned from wearing any clothing that- And this is the year of the wood dragon. That pictured a five-clawed dragon. That's not to say that all stories of dragons were based on mythology, animism, or legend. Ancient animals likely played a role as well. Yep, we're talking dragons and fossils. As early as China's Jin Dynasty, which lasted from 265 to 317 CE, we find a text mentioning the discovery of what were believed to be dragon bones in what's now Sichuan Province. A lot of the sediment in this area dates back to the Middle and Late Jurassic period, and the area is full of fossils. Remains of dinosaurs like the predatory theropods were found there, as well as a massive sauropod with an extremely long neck that could grow up to 25 meters long. Dragons inhabit exotic spaces, mysterious watery depths, expansive skies, and heavenly realms. Their powers are frightening but inspirational, and they're beautiful in their strength and otherworldliness. Luck, power, wisdom, bravery, strength. Chinese dragons inspired everything from religious practices to the national emblem, countless astounding artworks and architectural marvels to the globally famous dragon dance. The creature is inseparable from the history of the Chinese people. To embrace the Chinese dragon is to celebrate Chinese culture. Thanks for watching. Let <laughs> hey, you ain't gotta thank us. It's just what we do. It's what is happening around here. So there's a lot of drop, man. It's a lot of drop dropping in the atmosphere. Uh, you know, really interesting, man. I don't even know, man. I'm, I'm literally surfing away. I'm just clicking on stuff that says Chinese dragons, Western dragons. You know, love to learn Chinese, man. Uh, well, I have to dodge some. Did you collect game use? Emmett Smith. Oh, man. Shout out to the con. Emmett, man. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. You better ask somebody. Number 22. And there's 22 letters in the Eba root. Oh, man, I can't make this stuff up. Let's learn a little bit more about these dracons, man. It is the year of the dragon, my knight. Let's go. Throughout the ages and in more recent times, movie studios. But did you know that despite both being called dragon in English, these two creatures are not the same thing at all. They're actually kind of the opposite. For example, the European dragon is associated with fire. And the Chinese dragon with water. The European dragon is an evil beast, whereas the Chinese dragon is actually usually friendly. So in this video, I want to go through the- Because the dragons were kicking the hijack butt ball, man. You know what I mean? Like burning down castles. <laughs> the dragon was fighting for the indigenous, man. The dragon was fighting for you when you're in cold, especially. And just tried to protect you as much as possible. When the hijack tried to move into your castles, hijack, you know, your land and do all that, they had to deal with the wrath of the Dracon, just like we had to deal with the wrath of the fiery flying serpents in Numbers 21 and other situations when we're out of coal. So the Europeanized version of the dragon, the Western, so-called Western dragon, um, became the European concept of fear. They put the fear on it, sometimes regarded as Satan, right? Devils and demons, just like we're regarded as savages and, you know, um, you know, just some treacherous people, right? So thugs, right? We're just thugs, right? Shout out to the Khan Tupac, right? Tupac attack. Let's go. Through the history of both animals and tell you the differences. So next time you set out to slay a dragon, you actually know what you're looking for. Whoa. Slay the dragon. Just Only the hijack wanted to slay a dragon. Look at his eyes, man. His ancestors wanted to slay dragons. Look at him, man. Look at this guy. Man. Like a vampire. <laughs> Let's go. Just don't slay a Chinese dragon. Because they're friendly. Usually. This is Chinese dragons 
versus Western dragons. Lego. So in the West, we find a very early reference to a dragon in the book of Revelation in the Bible, describing a seven-headed dragon who was originally a being in the heavens, but was struck down by Michael and his angels. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, uh, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the it's crazy. The earth and his angels with him. It's crazy because Leviathan got seven heads and he had to go against the angels that were trying to slay him by Hawa's decree because he was being sacrificed for food for the righteous in the wilderness. Psalm 74. Psalm 74. Now this got reflected, refracted <laughs> into the New Testament, into some tw revelation, uh, as a chapter 12 dragon, you know, seven heads who's fighting angels, same as Leviathan. But it wasn't, Leviathan was bad. <laughs> it was that Leviathan was a righteous sacrifice. And even his skin or scales was used as a canopy or a tent to protect Israel. Uh, now we're talking manna. From that, you can see a connection with Satan, so it's definitely on the evil side of things. As we go through history, the dragon in Western culture becomes a beast that terrorizes villagers and demands livestock and treasure. Nope, only terrorizes hijacks. Treasures from them. For example, in the legend of Saint George and the Dragon from around the 6th century AD, where a dragon is terrorizing a village, and George, a Christian knight, bravely kills it. The Ooh. villagers all convert to Christianity, and he marries the princess, and they live. So, in order to get you to convert to Christianity, they have to slay your dragon, the alchemical dragon, which is the unknown substance, unknown origin. The vessel in which the Ruach is contained. They have to slay your spirit <laughs> to bring you Christianity. Insert the missionaries. Happily ever after. The Welsh have the red dragon on their national flag, and the red dragon appears in British literature representing the Britons fighting a white dragon representing the Saxons. There have been variations on how dragons have there have been variations on fighting a white dragon represent This symbology continues to play out even in the Super Bowl car. Super Bowl, Usher, and Alicia. <laughs> Everybody clowning. Hey, hey, Swiss. <laughs> Alicia Keys, man. I don't know how to spell Alicia Keys, man. You know what I'm talking about. Hey, Swiss, how you gonna let Usher hug up on your girl like this? <laughs> You're like, nah, it was cool, man. Like, hey, man, that wasn't cool at all. <laughs> nah, but I read a good post, man. I forgot what my naga's name was, but they broke down this symbology as even with Rihanna last year, she had this all red outfit on. You know what I mean? It's like it's the marriage of the really supposed to be the marriage of the red king and the white queen right not skin complexion but you know this was the you know um how do you say uh, this was the symbolism this was the image you know what i'm saying it was this king in red right both of them you know were so-called caucasian let's say you know what i mean but they had one hat on red one hat on white now, normally the king had on this red and the queen had on the white. But they did a reversal of the gender roles for those with eyes to see clearly. <laughs> Where they put, instead of the king in red, they put the queen in red. And instead of the king, queen being in uh, white, they put the king in white. You know what I'm saying? So. It had to do with this marriage of the red and the white queen and, queen and king of this pagan symbology. So just look up, you know, stuff, you know, just disconnect it, man, because it seems to be having a lot to do with the symbolism. And that's why Usher had to fill up on Alicia, because <laughs> they had to show that they was 
in love. They had to show that they was in love, Jack. They had to show they was in love. Hey, can I get this, man? Wow. Wow. My boo. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Presenting the Saxons. Don't leave your girl around. Be true player for real. Usher Ben. Usher Ben talking that talk. There have been variations on how dragons have been depicted in the West, but by the Middle Ages, they basically arrived at this, a being with a body like a huge lizard, two pairs of legs, wings like a bat, and breathing fire out of its mouth. They normally have an underground lair in a cave where they greedily hoard treasure. So I think you get the idea. The dragon in Western culture is not a positive creature in general. Now what about Chinese dragons? Well, in modern Chinese, they are called Long, and actually in the earliest text, dragons were referred to as Yinglong, or the reacting dragon. In contrast to the evil beasts living in caves in the West, the Chinese dragon is generally positive. It is described in the classic of dragons, or Long Jing, as dragon, a divine animal, an engineer and master of the rain. It was the responding dragon who assisted the Yellow Emperor in his battle against the god of war, Shiryou, right at the beginning of Chinese civilization. A dragon also assisted Yu the Great to tame the waters after the Great Flood. Dragons are seen as integral to the running of the universe, from water management here on Earth to responsibilities up in the heavens. The divine dragons cause the clouds to deliver rain. The earthly dragons determine positions of rivers and drainage. The heavenly dragons guard the heavenly palaces, and the hiding scriptures dragons protect the Buddhist teachings. The classic of dragons contains an extensive description of what a dragon looks like, using features of other animals to describe it. Its head is like a camel, its horns are like a deer, its ears like a cow, eyes like a ghost, neck like a snake, belly like an eel, scales like a fish, claws like an eagle, and palms like a tiger. The dragon embodies all the animals, and it was first before the animals, so it wasn't like a while I was copying these other animals <laughs> to create the dragon. These other animals were created with the reflection of the dragon. They all have embodiments, uh, you know, energy signatures, physical phenotypes, you know what I'm saying, connected with the uh, origin, you know. The Drakan, the angels, the Seraphim, the highest order of the angel, Kanka. And it also talks about the magical properties of the creature. It can disappear and appear again. It can turn big or small, long or short, massive or tiny. The book talks about how dragons rise. Big or small like dragonflies, like butterflies, car, cats, house cat. On cloud vapor. And somebody said the house cat has like these serpentine type of eyes. The house cat, so-called house cat, you know what I'm talking about. It's different than like the rest of the cat family. You know, I'm just remembering comments. Y'all comments, y'all com y'all cometas. Your um your shooting stars, right? <laughs> stars with a tail, bearded with tangled locks, we're talking dragons. But yeah, the house cat has like different type of eyes than like let's say a lion or no or let's say a tiger or a lion you know i guess a cat um you know they have more rounded eyes but the serpentine type eyes is only reserved for these house cats who some say are dragons now if dragons were in dragon form now it would scare the crap out of everybody even us and there are dragons our guardian would scare us because we are these cons are not conscious to really see clearly, you know what I mean? But we are beginning, right? This is a new beginning. So, you know, these cats kind of carry this spiritual flow. You can recon cats and spirituality and protection and all this stuff. Spiritual protectors, uh, you know, guardians, you know, different things. Why are their eyes like dragon eyes, you know, more like a so-called serpentine flow. 
and there are dragons of different colors with different abilities. When a white dragon spits on the earth, it turns to gold. Mm. When a purple dragon drools, it becomes transparent jade. Mm. Yellow dragons are the leaders of dragons, and you will often see Chinese emperors wearing yellow for the dragon motif on their clothing. In the Qing dynasty, these robes were standardized as the imperial dragon robe for exclusive use by the emperor. They're yellow and embroidered with nine dragons and auspicious cloud patterns. Now, although we said- <laughs> Back to the number nine. How many times are they gonna tell us number nine? How special it is. And it's interesting when you add up one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus, uh, what's after five? Six plus seven plus eight plus nine. It equals 45 and four plus five is, leave it in the comment said most dragons are friendly, that does not mean that they never harm humankind. According to the classic of dragons, the rain brought by a sick dragon has a fishy smell. I mean, that one wouldn't really be the dragon's fault. But then the classic of dragons talks about two types of bad Chinese dragons. Those that bring calamities are called evil dragons, and those that kill people in anger are called poison dragons. Then in addition, since dragons were controllers of water, as well as bringing the rain, they could also withhold the rain and bring drought. But Chinese people often view natural disasters as the wrath of heaven against human beings for their moral depravity. So maybe those evil dragons were still under the control of heaven and were just being used when morality was falling apart, often towards the- Okay, when morality was falling apart, now we're saying you were out of cold. So they withheld the rain. Now we could talk the Anasazi migration. Hakan. <laughs> hey, I have to Hakan hire Mark, man. Take the wheel. For real. The drought. The Anasazi migration. 900 to like 1300, right? They say all the water, you know, went into like the underground rivers and, you know, uh, retreated underground. So dragons are in control, you know, by nature, natural by law, <laughs> by Hawa, dragons have their roles to play the end of a dynasty. But on the flip side, the regular dragons were the majority and they were seen as auspicious animals. They're classified as one of the four holy beasts or siling in Chinese culture, mm. which is the dragon, the phoenix, the qilin or Chinese unicorn, and the turtle. If an emperor mm. saw a dragon, it would be an auspicious signal from heaven that he was governing the country well. Throughout history, there have been numerous sightings written about in classical texts. If you want to know more about those, you can check out our video on five real dragon sightings from Chinese history. That's what it looks like, and I'll put it on the end screen of this video. So next time someone tries to tell you that Western dragons and Chinese dragons are the same thing, you can tell them that they absolutely are not. One is connected to fire, the other water. One is connected to Satan and hell, and the other, the heavens. One brings disaster to villages and needs a knight to save them, and the other, generally brings good fortune. They are the same thing. It just depends on which role they play. The fire and the water, the elements are all one. You can't separate them. You could try, but they're one. They're in one order, one flow. All the elements are one. All the Hebrew letters are one, from the Tau to the Aleph. They're the same, but you change the behavior of that dragon, my nigga. You change the behavior of that track. All right, man. <laughs> Let go. <laughs> We're going to talk Pluto and Aquarius. First, let's talk some uh, radiation and some fungi eating radiation. And remember, they mentioned the 5G. Not me, boss. Not me. Things like the walls of the Chernobyl reactor. Now, normally, strong radiation is not considered food for organism because it kills them at high enough doses. But not these fungi. They grow even bigger and faster when they are eating radiation. Now, when I say eat, 
They're basically chewing and swallowing radiation-filled dirt. Then the radiation exposure kicks the fungi's metabolism into high gear. It is likely their color that allows them to do this, particularly melanin, the molecule responsible for skin color and other pigmentation. Studies have shown that after radiation exposure, cells with melanin in them increase... What? Studies have shown that after radiation exposure... <laughs> Again... Studies have shown, so they're studying melanin. We know that. We also know from previous drops that they still can't figure out what melanin is. It's unknown substance like a dragon. They have one version of melanin that they study. I think they call it melanin type A, whatever. But there's infinite versions of melanin that they still haven't even figure it out, discover, none of that. But studies have shown that after radiation exposure, cells with melanin in them increase their metabolic activities. We got this before that melanin is so miraculous, hawa hawa, that it can take something like radiation and transform it into something beneficial <laughs> for the body. Ain't that something? Hawa already gave you a cheat code. Now, I don't know if it does it just generically or does it matter if you're in code, right? If your frequency is up, your melanin can do spectacular things. If your frequency is kill a nigga, steal from a nigga, lurk on a nigga, jack a nigga. If your, mel if your melanin is on that type of stuff, on that type of time, it might not be activated, right? But if your kundalini is rising, if your kundalini is rising, if your dracon is rising, if it's raised, then your melanin whew, whew, is official, official, like a referee with a whistle. Crypto. <laughs> it's hidden, man. It could take death and turn it into life. So these five jizzle towers, right? And when they turn them up, it's only going to turn you into shooting stars. <laughs> it's only going to turn, turn you into something magnificent because that cheat code, that melanin, you know, can do miraculous things. This is probably why they haven't turned it all the way up yet. They're just trying to figure this shit out. They might be speeding up our awakening or awareness faster than it would have been because of these radiations and, you know, turn off your Wi-Fi. Hey, you charged up, you're able to turn that Wi-Fi <laughs> into something magnificent. Ain't that crazy? Increase their metabolic activity. Some scientists speculate that... Because ain't no way the most high depends on or is waiting on you <laughs> to... Uh, you know, get to a point that you avoid your own utter destruction, you would have been destroyed. A while I had to put the cheat code in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If if a while was waiting on you to get to the point where a while wants you to be, where you are a true code keeping nagi, if a while had to wait on you, man, that Wi Fi, that radiation, even the towers they got and the chemtrails and all that stuff, that would have destroyed this by now. That would have destroyed it, man. You know what I mean? But Banagi, Hawaii gave you a cheat code. It's not a cheat, it's a code, right? But it, to the hijack, it's like, how are they getting, how are they bypassing this signal? How are they bypassing the sickness? We expected them to be more sick, more ill. For real. We expected them to be out of here because they're viruses and tenderoni and all that is targeting us yeah they got their casualties of war that don't look like us that's cool i mean well, it's not cool no no casualty is cool <laughs> but by now it should have been way worse for us why isn't it melanin might be able to absorb radiation and redirect that energy for other functions in the cell so researchers are what 
what? Absorb all this harmful radiation and redirect it as positive energies to the cell? Creating these unique fungi to potentially use their melanin to solve problems like radiation exposure from traveling and living in space. Mm. Some fungi eat radiation. And I mean, like really radioactive things like the walls of the Chernobyl reactor. Now, normally strong radiation is not considered food for organisms because it kills them at high enough doses. But not these fungi. They grow even bigger and faster when they are eating radiation. Now, when I say eat, they're basically chewing and swallowing radiation-filled dirt. Then the radiation exposure kicks the fungi's metabolism into high gear. It is likely their yeah. color that allows them to do this particularly melanin uh. molecule responsible for skin color and other uh. pigmentation. Studies have shown that after radiation exposure, cells with melanin in them increase their metabolic activity. Some scientists speculate that melanin might be able to absorb radiation and redirect that energy for other functions in the cell. So researchers Ooh. are studying these unique fungi to potentially use their melanin to solve problems like radiation exposure from traffic. <laughs> well, keep studying, boss. I don't think you're going to catch up because Pluto is in Aquarius. Monique Ruffin, take the wheel for real. What does it mean? Happy Tuesday. My name is Monique Ruffin. I'm um, always... I'm also known as the Moon Mama. Okay. I am the co-founder and head facilitator over at Follow the Sun, where my work and my devotion is helping women and people, people, but especially women, helping people wake up and remember who we really are. Um, I wanted to talk today about some of the astrology that's really intense. And I am not a, I don't, you, you, you don't often hear me talking about um, things that are very frightening because I really believe that we create the reality and that we are capable of impacting reality when we understand who we are. Mm. And so we're about to have something happen that's pretty rare. We're about to have Mars conjunct Pluto in the next week or so. And Pluto is the underlord. It's like, you know, um, it's it rules Scorpio. So it's about jealousy and transformation and death and alchemy. And Pluto is in the for earliest degree of Aquarius right now. So Aquarius is the higher self and Mars is coming and Mars is the warrior and Mars is attraction. It's our will. Mars is, um, like I said, the warrior, it governs Aries. So it's like if you put Aries and Scorpio together, it's very combustion. It's like, it's like an explosion. So we're already seeing a number of wars going on in the world. So we're already seeing that. And uh, we're already seeing the world's wars going on. But something really unique is underway. Our reality is changing. Our reality is literally changing. And because we've never seen reality change in, in, in our lives, we don't really know what that means. But what it looks like is, you know, all the conversations about aliens. Um, it looked like COVID several years ago where we were all on lockdown. All of these new things, these conversations that are becoming normal that would not have even been on our minds before. So reality is really changing. And with reality changing, we are going to change as human beings. And those of us who have the courage to, um, to impose yourself in the transformation, 
Meaning those of us who have the courage to do the shadow work, those of us who have the courage to begin to change our diets, change our minds, change our lives. Like I'm starting to see people doing homesteading and gardening. Those of us who have the courage to invite change and transformation into our lives. Do you have the courage to keep the cold? It takes courage to put away your idols. You go against your family with this Christmas and yada yada, with you know Sunday this and da 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 these mosque and that. Like, do you have the courage to say, you know, the law didn't tell us to go to no mosque or churches or none of this stuff, but to rest <laughs> every seven days to take a breath? It's it sounds weird. It sounds different to say. I'm most high over everything. Do you have the courage to get the covetous out your heart bone, to not be a false witness? Do you have the courage for this transformation? Lives ...are going to have an easier time with this because, like I said, our reality is changing. We need to change. And the energy that's coming through with Mars conjunct Pluto is an energy of war. Now... Mm. It's important for us to understand that war doesn't just mean what's going on in Israel or what's going on in the Ukraine. War is the war that we're having inside of ourselves. Let's go. The, the real war is the one that's happening in your own consciousness, at the edge of your own heart, at the in your own thought the real war is happening inside of your own mind and we're all feeling this right everyone is feeling it's crazy it. man because it's like the real war is happening of you transforming into a code keeper let's say right but it might be projected outwardly as war in israel you know a war or war with the police <laughs> Rodney King, like it might be projected outwardly, like it's being projected, gangs, yada, yada, yada. But the real war is happening with us, not killing, not stealing. Like when we decide to be cold keepers, that's when <laughs> it's game, set, match, man. That's when it's a body bag for the illusion. But as long as we're conflicted, conflict exists outside of us. That's a deeper understanding of what they call as above, so below, or whatever's happening out, outward is happening inward. The war is inward, man. Right? And the opportunity that we have is to take the path less traveled. That is the only thing that is... How many code keeping movements can you name in history? I'll wait. I'll wait. Name a movement in the 50s, 60s, 70s, yada, yada, that were code keepers making a change or, you know, coming together with unity as code keepers from block to block and city to city and country to country, state to state. Like it was Christians. With Martin Luther King, it was Muslims or Islam with Malcolm X, right? And those are the last two great civil rights heroes. <laughs> then we got Tupac, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, man. When's, when's the last time influential code keepers, you know what I'm saying, were, you know, bringing it all together and making this movement pop off? I'm not talking about Jesus loving Yahweh. We're about to talk Yahweh one more time, one more time before the solar eclipse, we got to go full court press on Yahweh Shire one more time on this JC, on this Yeshua, and talk phantoms and duplications like the Mormons be talking. <laughs> Let's go, man. Is like, that's how to, um, to, to bring solution to the war inside of you. Uh -huh. Make a choice and make a choice for yourself, save code. your own life. Keep the code. Do the selfish thing. Yeah. <laughs> Do the thing that is gonna piss everybody else off. Bang, by selfish, she don't mean just for you. She's talking about for your tribe, man. I don't know what she, I don't know her. I don't know Monique. 
I'm talking about for your tribe. I'm I'm looking at Monique with a drag pop. I ain't gonna put it on Monique. I'm gonna say the selfish thing to me <laughs> is not just falling into the illusion of seclusion, but saying it pisses them off for us to not spend money from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. That's an economic battle plan for the so-called Negro. You keep your money in your wallet for an entire day on their busiest shopping day, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, it's going to bankrupt, bankrupt Hijack City. But they don't want that, and a lot of Nagas don't want that. They just want this thing to go on forever. They, they're they afraid of the unknown so much that they would rather stay in the captivity they are the frog in the pot as the heat gets turned up. They know it's getting hotter, but they don't jump out the pot until they boil their ass to death. Come. The selfish thing is not to go along with the grain with Hijack City and to say, nah, I know y'all going out Friday night. <laughs> But I'm a chill. I'm a rest. Oh man, you pissing me off. You don't ever kick. Yeah, man. I'm I'ma keep Shabbat. The selfish thing is to say, nah, I ain't gonna go slide on them. You know, I I know what they did, and I know what such and such meant. But I'ma choose to be a code keeper because my love for the Creator is greater than my love for vengeance, man. I'm going to put it in the hands of Hawa and know that whoever got felt that they were sliding on my bro. All this is happening as a chain reaction to us being out of code. It wasn't even they fought. <laughs> they grew up like me. They grew up loving their block, their territory. They're not thinking about it in terms of killing a tribe. They they riding for their loved ones. They riding for their block. They riding for their set. They riding for their gang. They're not thinking. It's not personal. You know what I'm saying? It feels personal because the homies is dying. But they're only sliding for the homie or lurking on these, these niggas because everybody been out of cold. It, it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like You can't even blame them. But if I stop this shit, if I, if I start pushing the peace, pushing the shalom, you know what I mean? Perhaps... That's going to create enough change for them. You know, maybe it won't. Wow. But I'm going to believe in Hawaii more than I believe in their vengeance or my vengeance. And that's going to piss the homies off. They're going to say, nigga, you ain't sliding for the homie. <laughs> we ain't supposed to stop sliding. We, we slide every year on his birthday. Every year somebody got to die. Every month, every day, right? No killing. Our own tribe. That's the rules. That's the code. Somebody got to be brave enough to piss everybody off and stop this senseless violence, man. Off. Do that thing because we have the North Node in Aries. Mm. And the North Node in Aries means that you have to follow your own perspective. Mm. Mm. It means that you can't. Do the dragonfly or do the drag. You're talking about the dragonfly perspective. <laughs> I'm talking about the dragonfly perspective. We gotta follow the dragon. We gotta we gotta see clearly. If they don't see clearly enough to be in cold, stop killing yada yada, stop murdering, stop stop jacking each other. Like if they don't see it, we gotta see it. One more time, man. You gotta be brave enough. You know what I'm saying? To deal with the homies being pissed off or family being pissed off or co-workers being pissed off. You got to be willing to take that heat, man. This is the time for it. We're all feeling this, right? Everyone is feeling it. And the opportunity that we have is to take the path less traveled. That is the only thing that is like, that's how to um to to bring solution to the war inside of you make a choice and make a choice for yourself save your own life mm. do the selfish thing <laughs> do the thing that is gonna piss everybody else off do that thing 
because we have the North Node in Aries. And the North Node in Aries means that you have to follow your own perspective. It means that you can't follow the crowd. So you have to do the thing that you would never want to do, that you don't even believe is possible, that you think is going to kill you. Like, because that's what Mars conjunct Pluto is. It is a high stake, high crisis situation that is asking you to have courage, that is asking you to, you know, choose yourself, to be safe. Be a truth seeker, right? Like you might think telling the truth, you know, it will be your demise. You know what I mean? You might say, hey, everybody that told the truth, you know, something happened and then the government gonna come after them, boom, 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 boom. But not yet. There's a time for the truth. There's a time to risk it all just for the truth selfish to to um to be loyal to yourself and to forego acceptance and all of the things that we look for from other people to not give a fuck about what anybody thinks of you but to do the thing that you need to do and i'm telling you do the thing that scares you the most do the thing that scares you the most now, for those of you who've been working with me, you know that we face this stuff a little bit every month, every week, so that by the time we get to a situation like this, we don't have a whole incredible thing going on that we, you know, cannot take on. If you've been doing the work in, in the community that I'm facilitating, we do it a little bit because we know what's coming. So we can look at our lives and go, okay, this is on the horizon. What do I need to do? Because we are paying attention to our realities and because we know that we're building a reality. But if you have not been doing any work, if you have not been doing your internal work, if you have not been readying yourself for this time, it's kind of like the last bus and you're either gonna you're gonna have to drop everything to go you're gonna have to jump off the you're going to have to risk it all mm. and that is the power of this time right now because oh, oh gosh reality is really changing y'all it mm. really is changing and what's going on is we've all been in this sort of collective experience and now realities are about to start being your individual frequency. Mm. So you're not going to be able to energetically hold on to other people where there is not equal benefit. Mm -hmm. If you are in a relationship where, you know, where you're siphoning off other people's energy or somebody siphoning off your energy, what does that look like? People who are in relationships because they don't want to be alone. People who are in relationships... <laughs> for status, for these, all that shit is about to go away. Woo! <laughs> and now, with a dragonfly perspective, think about everyone who calls themselves tribe, tribe, you know, but they're really just ciphering off your energy. How many of these situations have you dealt with? You know what I mean? They see that you resonate, family, whatever, you know what I mean? And they act and, you know, they, they, they play in a role, they, Saying all these words, shallow what? Shallow what? <laughs> they they can say it for that time period, but that's gonna go away. Like they can't fake it no more. We've been saying this energy is very hard to fake for a prolonged period of time. People fall off, you know, fall away into you know what I'm saying whatever personal tor personal turmoil because it's personal. You know whatever they're going through. And they haven't really, you know, came to that energetic frequency. They're just siphoning off your frequency. It's a wrap for that. Ain't no hijacks allowed. You got to code up with yourself. You got to dodge your own damn hijack type battle being taken away. So the ways that we have been anchoring ourselves in identities that are really 
valueless that don't really have that shit is gonna collapse i'm telling you you all reality is changing yeah and so you are going to have to make the hard choice you're gonna have to make the hard choice it's just a it's just a very interesting time and here's the thing the way to make the hard choice is by just really wanting to be free you have to really want to be free. I love that. I love that. You got to want freedom, man. You want a captivity? Jack and fly perspective. Think about it like a wise code. Do it around me 28. You listen, you get the blessings. You don't listen, you get the curses. How bad do you want to slay your brother and keep killing in these gangs and shit? How bad do you want that? You gotta want to be. You gotta want your freedom for your family, for your friends, for your children in the future. Like you gotta want freedom for yourself. You gotta do the selfish thing. You gotta want to free yourself more than to be lurking and sliding and killing and stealing, man. Or worshiping this god, that god, whatever the case is. You gotta desire Hawaii. You gotta desire freedom, and Hawaii is your only savior, God more than you want to save face more than you want to belong mm -hmm. you have to want to be free why because pluto is in aquarius Talk on it. and aquarius is about freedom and so all the things that are keeping you hostage mm -hmm. all the things that are keeping you locked into old patterns all the things that you and these gangs keep you hostage you know what i'm saying like growing up in l.a man a lot of why this is gang central. You know what I mean? Uh, personally speaking, man, my family growing up in Inglewood, my big cousins were very, very active. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have to do too much to walk down the street because everybody knew my big cousin Devin and them and my big cousin Dre and them. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of them, you know, were involved in whatever sets in Inglewood or, you know, other places, you know, different things. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, most of my personal cousins and family, they was all, you know, in different bloodhoods, you know, whether they was from Queen Street or Inglewood families or, you know what I'm saying, even, uh, you know, neighborhood 20s and, you know, different things, you know what I mean? The homies um, that I, uh, you know, like went to school with, a lot of them was from crib hoods, you know, different, you know, 60s, 40s, this, this, this different neighborhood hoods, so, you know, they was always at war and different things happening. And, you know, I'm just going to school and my mom and my pops is keeping us active. <laughs> Me and my sister, you know what I'm saying? We had to play music and pick up instruments and um, whatever theater classes. Shout out to the late, great Marla Gibbs out in the Murr Park. She had the um, um, Marla Gibbs Acting Studios, Crossroads. Faith Acting Studios was right there off Stockard. You know what I'm saying? So we was active, like always in classes, whether it was miming, tap dance, whatever, just to keep us busy. She just wanted to keep us busy. You know what I mean? But she could only do so much. Homies at school was doing their thing. And, you know, it's hard not to get, you know, in any way. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So, um, but it did work to an extent. You know what I'm saying? It was pretty much my sister and I, at least, like, you know, we kept good grades, honored schools, and went to you know, cool, you know, decent colleges and whatever the case is. But, man, like, it was difficult <laughs> to walk that path. We, I needed parent, our parents to do that. If I didn't have my moms and, and that, that was like educators, man, it, it was a wrap for me, man. So, they, there's a trap everywhere. And we know that in the gangs, the government is controlling this shit. You know what I'm saying? The informants, it, the, the infiltration so you can't even really claim your gang and wholeheartedly and not think the government's involved in, 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 in diverting your spirit your energy your frequency into something demonic right you can go to college and join your fraternities and sororities and you can have your own positive flow you know what i'm saying but as you be get awareness you're like yo even that is very much controlled obviously right and there's a lot of, you know, not a, shout out to UB dropping grade drop about how these fraternity sororities are, you know, very much controlled back into the Freemasonry flow. So everything's controlled into that flow, whether we're talking street gangs, whether we're talking 
uh, you know, fraternity sorties. What, what are we just talking like? Just basic shit, like just, you know, basic social media uh, mentalities, you know, how the ladies feel about themselves, how the men feel about themselves, gender roles, RP, uh, Kevin Samuel, <laughs> talking about a lot of the gender stuff. So everything's control. You really got to separate. Me being in L.A., you know what I'm saying, praise the creator only, man. I was able to find a lane, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not the only one. Like, not everybody is some hardcore super gangbanger that grows up in L.A. You know, every, everyone has their own path, you know what I'm saying? But the affiliation is all over the place. And you go to college, that's there. And you go to here, that's there. You know what I'm saying? Fraternities are like college gangs. And you just, you know, tribing up. And we're going we're gonna to get some drop. Um... You know what I'm saying? Just connected with the Nipsey Hustle flow and the homie out of Inglewood, Munchie B, talking about, you know what I'm saying? Well, not, he ain't doing the talking on the video, but they're talking about Munchie B. And just how, like, you know, it was just tribes going at it, whether you're talking Inglewood family, neighborhood, 6 so These are just tribes, man, but it's still fat. It's like all this is family. Whether you go to Chicago, BDs, GDs, and all that, they live a block away. I ain't from 63rd, but I'm from 64th. Like, come on, man. Like, it's the same tribe. Man. It's one street away, one block. Look how they got us flipping and tripping on each other, man. Tell me if I'm lying, man. Tell me if I'm lying, man. So I'm grateful, man, not to have sold my soul to the gang or sold my soul to the, the fraternity or sold my soul to that type of mentality or relationship. You know what I'm saying? Um... In so many ways, it could have been Hijack City, but Hawaii will keep you protected, man. You know what I'm saying? And if you're here, you're hearing this message, it's because it's for you. You know what I mean? You you knee deep in any of this stuff, it's for us. It's time to piss everybody off, man. Piss off the piss off the homies if you got to. Piss off the family if you got to. Be selfish, right? Disconnect if you have to, because it ain't you really being selfish like you all about you, but you all about the creator. You know, you all about M H O E. M H O E. Pluto's an Aquarius, man. Shout out to Monique Ruffin. Um got one more quick drop on Pluto and Aquarius, man. We'll get a few minutes of this from World Astrology Report. And let's look at it with a dragon flit perspective the overturning of old systems but is there a way to predict what the phases of this coming Pluto and they're all talking about revolution which is interesting <laughs> I mean don't be uh, anti-American right boss 1828 y'all not gonna still got that that water <laughs> we still got that water Are you a native? Are you pan-native, man? You're all-encompassing to the indigenous kinds? Are you produced by nature? We got some natural by law coming in, huh? Hey, out to the car, popping super off, man. I truly uh, love my bro natural, man. Uh, you know what I mean? I really feel strongly connected to my bro, man, because he out here in L.A. one, and, you know, it's like I speak his language. He, he speaks my language. I, I, I understand the bro natural. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to kick it with him. I ain't got to talk to him on the phone. I just know kind of, you know, the frequency. You know what I'm saying? So when the con drops, I, I just connect to it. You know what I'm saying? He got this Ethiopian drive, whether it's the music, whether it's whatever. Make sure y'all supporting the con natural by law. Just put that in YouTube, natural by law. Get in that classroom. And know that you just just prepare to get your mind bone blasted. He's been very uh, persistent, dedicated, um, just very like uh, how you say it? like it's it's simple, man. Con natural by law breaks it down in the most simplistic fashions, yet it's extremely advanced. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Take notes in that classroom. Can't explain it, man. You just got to enjoy it yourself. And all praise to Wild for these cons that's on the rise and been rising and showing their consistency for so long. 
like Cudi Mayo, like Natural, like Templar, like Yosef, like, you know what I'm saying, Ty Bazaar, you know what I mean? All right, produced by nature, born with the being. Are you born with the being to be? Oh, wow. Okay. We're just talking definitions, boss. Because Pluto's, <laughs> Pluto's in Aquarius. It was anti-American, man. Because they don't have anti-Semitic. So one time we were looking for anti-Semitic, and I saw anti-American. And I said, ain't nobody talking about anti-American, boss. What's... Was anti American, boss. Oh, if you're anti America, you're opposed to the American, right? America. The copper color race is found here. Wow. Wow, the con. Don't be opposing the con, man. Now, they tried to spin it just to being about the government <laughs> of the United States Corporation. But we are talking about the tribe, right? The people. The true definition of anti-American is to be opposed to the revolution in America. And they're saying it's all about revolution with this solar eclipse, with this Pluto in Aquarius. But the revolution first has to happen within before it happens outside of you. My sister Monique was breaking that down, right? You got to, you're at war with yourself, man. You got to do that work, right? You got to code up within you. You got to tribe up inside of you before you say, where's my tribe? Where's my tribe? Halawa, Shalawa, where's my tribe? Because all that's going to happen is that, you know, you're going to be around people with all your baggage, you're going to be around the campfire <laughs> with all your baggage, stuff that you could have handled on your own. You're going to bring it to your tribe in the time that they don't need to hear that stuff. They don't need to be pulled down by your frequency. You're going to come opening, complaining, and being all emotionally hurt for no reason. And you could have handled that. You didn't have to bring down the frequency. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have to invade the pure shalawan that should be you by the campfire now you got things to talk about that's one thing but if you're constantly dripping out all this hatred and disdain and disruption like that means you're a walking interference pattern you shouldn't bring that interference to the tribe unnecessarily when you can do the work right do the revolution inside of yourself don't be anti-American. Don't be opposed to the revolution <laughs> in yourself. Don't be opposed to the revolution in America. That's anti-American to be opposed to the revolution of the cons. Of the con dynasty, right? Con. Let's go. We're going to go pretty quickly. We're going to cover some links, talk some... Man, Mormon this and, you know, code keeping that <laughs> and definitely get into, uh, yeah, that, that black Jesus, right? <laughs> that black Christ, right? That Yahweh shot. We're going to get into that for the dismount. Let's go. Oh, oh. Aquarian revolution will look like. I think there is. In the last episode, we saw how Pluto's progress through the five Egyptian bounds of Capricorn spoke to the major historical events that happened in the 15 year period. In this episode, we're going to apply the same kind of analysis to Pluto's last transit through Aquarius from 1777 to 1798. And then we're going to apply what we've do some speculative work in imagining how Pluto's coming transit through Aquarius might play out. Now, I'm not going to explain all the theory behind this again. We covered that in my previous video, which you can find on the channel page. But we are going to need some historical background about the period we're talking about, the late 18th century. This was the period of the late Enlightenment. It was towards the end of an age of fire, a time when Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions were happening in fire signs. What we tend to see in these ages of fire, in European history at least, is the empowerment of monarchical systems of government, where power is concentrated in a single central figure 
a monarch or an emperor. Why would this be? Well, the sun is very strong in the fire triplicity. And if we consider European history and look what happens during Ages of Fire, we see the same themes playing out over and over again. For example, in the 7th and 8th century BCE, we find the era when Rome was ruled by kings and the Greek city-states were ruled by the tyrants. This is where we get the word tyrant from. And if we fast forward 800 years to the next Age of Fire, we find Augustus and the first Roman emperors. And in the next one, which began with a conjunction in 769 CE, we meet Charlemagne. Charles the Great, a Frankish king who managed to reunite Europe after the Dark Ages and the fall of the Roman Empire. Now, the Age of Fire that we're concerned with today began with a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in Sagittarius in 1603. And lo and behold, what began at this time is the period that historians refer to as the Age of Absolutism. It was the era of absolute rulers like Louis XIV, the Sun King, and Peter, Catherine, and Frederick the Great. Louis, of course, said l'état c'est moi, I am the state. The solar theme is unmistakable in this period. So in the period running up to our Pluto and Aquarius transit, rule by absolute monarchies had become the norm in Europe. But what I've observed is that each elemental age contains the seeds of its own undoing. During this age of fire, Enlightenment thinkers like John Locke, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and many others were beginning to suggest that there were better ways of organizing society. And so we find ourselves at the end of the 18th century, Pluto is approaching Aquarius. Now Aquarius is one of Saturn's two signs. It's a fixed air sign. It has to do with technology, invention, and ideas about how society should be structured. And one theme that tends to come up repeatedly when Pluto moves into Aquarius is we see revolutionary moments in history. Revolution. Remember that Aquarius opposes Leo, the sign of the sun. So Pluto-Aquarian revolutions have to do with overturning that which is at the center by those from the margins. And so at the end of this age of fire, Pluto and Aquarius, we saw... So the system Monique is like, yo, you got to go for it, right? Like, this is your time. Like, things are changing. And, you know, here comes, you know, uh, this cat, you know, saying... Hey man, it's about overturning things. Now they're gonna see it their way. We gonna got, we gonna get the dragonfly, right? We gonna do the dragonfly, do the dragonfly, ah, do the dragonfly. <laughs> we gonna do the dragonfly and say, is it about overturning the hijack? Period. And how can you overturn it with nothing? You need something. You need the code. You need. Let's see. Not killing, not stealing, not covetous, not being jealous of each other. That puts you in a higher vibration. And all these hijacks that in their tribes, they are covetous. They are false witnesses. They are killing and stealing from each other. But not us, right? That puts us in a higher vibration. We keep Shabbat and they don't keep it. That puts us in a higher vibration. Overturning the hijack starts within, then <laughs> you witness the miracle. There were two revolutions that overturned rule by monarchies. The American colonists freed themselves from rule by the English king, and the French disposed of their monarchy altogether. Now, what we should also bear in mind is these revolutions didn't happen concurrently. The American Revolution broke out first and inspired the French Revolution. And in certain ways that we'll soon see, it caused it to happen. But in this episode, we're gonna focus on Pluto's movement through the bounds. And what we'll see is how the bound ruler of the time describes what was going on on either side of the Atlantic, but in quite different ways. So here are the five bounds of Aquarius, and you'll note that they're different sizes and appear in a different order to those of Capricorn. As with Capricorn, the first seven degrees are Mercury's bound, but the next six belong to Venus, the next seven are Jupiter's bound, then we have Mars's bound, which gets five degrees, and the last five degrees are Saturn's bound. So when Pluto moved into Aquarius for the first time on April the 4th, 1777, the American Revolutionary War was already raging. It's generally seen to have begun with the Battle of Lexington on April the 19th, Stop. last time I checked. Just me. The last time that I checked, right? <laughs> can't make, I can't make this stuff up. Last time that we checked. Wow. <laughs> wow. America's been at war. 
93% of the time at least. Seventeen seventy seven. Wow. Wow. Seventeen seventy six. Since seventeen seventy six, United States has been at war ninety three percent of the time. Say hawaah. <sighs> wow. Breath and security. Slow down, drop. You drop it too. Shikamagwa. 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 The Cherokee that didn't want to make no deals and sign no treaties. These are the Hebrews that said, nah, man, I ain't going to give up no more land. Dragon Canoe said, we ain't giving up no more millions of acres or land. Takum say said, no more, boss. Treaty of Fort Wayne, Treaty of Greenville. Oh, no, 30 million? 30 million? You just gave up Ohio? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so they went to war. They said, no, nah, we ain't doing this. Other tribes said, hey, we're going to promise some goodies. We're promised some land. How'd that work out for you, hijacks? Shikamaga. Shikamaga War. First 20 years of Shikamaga War. Northwest End War is Northwest of Maxim. Ah, yeah. All the way into the Battle of the Kumse. And more Cherokee War. So these wars were about indigenous cons, man. Like a Mormon. <laughs> all about the indigenous cons. It's all about the indigenous cons. Copper color races found here. All these wars through the 1800s. You didn't have time to be no slave brought from Africa if you was fighting all these wars. You're telling me these Cherokee, Shikamago were homeborn slave peacefully on some plantation. With no revolution. The revolutions we hear about is an IET or Haiti, right? Toussaint Lee Overture type stuff, right? Nat Turner. <laughs> Come on, man. You didn't hear about all these revolutions? Because <laughs> they didn't equate the Negro with the Indian, which we know. The Negroes are the indigenous of India, superior. All these wars. When did you have time to be a homeboy slave? When did you have time to be some slave from Africa? What people were fighting all these wars? And if they were fighting these wars, how come they don't talk about it <laughs> today? They'll claim it if you force them to claim it. They'll be like, yeah, 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 that was me. That was our people. <laughs> nah, man. This is all Naga shit, right? Naga stuff, right? And they're saying, oh, 1777 revolution and what it's about. Like, you're missing the point. Because I don't see no Nagas fighting these wars in your depiction. 1775. At that time, Pluto was in the Mars bound of Capricorn. And that is. And they said that was, let's get it back. They said that was Pluto's first time in Aquarius. So I don't know about these horoscopes and 
all this stuff, man. But I can watch it with a dragonfly perspective like we do it. And, uh, you know, he just said it was the first time this happened. And it caused a So what's happening now? Mercury's bound, but the next six belong to Venus. The next seven are Jupiter's bound. Then we have Mars's bound, which gets five degrees. And the last five degrees are Saturn's bound. So when Pluto moved into Aquarius for the first time on April the 4th, 1777. For the first time in 1777. Cara, Chera, or it's Cara, Ka, like the Cara, Kata. Native American group that separated <laughs> from the greater body of Cherokee during the American Revolutionary War. Why did you separate Sheik of Marvel? Why was this Pluto's first time in Aquarius? Clearly, <laughs> if the Sheik of Marvel are just popping off, separating from the other Cherokee, which means we the people, so call it the greater group of Hebrew people, right? that were treaty-making Nagas, right? Following several military attacks or setbacks, <laughs> American reprisal, hijack American reprisals, the majority of the Cherokee people chose to make treaties of peace and friendship with the hijack Americans near the end of 1776, which led to 1777, Pluto's first time in Aquarius. Dragonfly perspective. However, in the winter of 1776-1777, the followers of Skia Gusta, or Dragon Canoe, Dragon Canoe, moved with him down the Tennessee or Tunisia <laughs> River away from their historic overhill. Kara Katai or Cherokee towns. Because Kara means black or melanated. The Ka is the dragon, but the Katai is also Cathay. Relocated in a more isolated area, they established 11 new towns in order to gain distance from the colonists' hijack invasion. The Frontier Americans associated Dragon Canoe and his band or tribe with the new town of Shikamaka Creek. So the hijack associated these Hebrews with the Shikamaka Creek and referred to these Cherokee as Shikamagas when that wasn't their chosen name. These are Judah, Ephraim, Manat, all them, right? So five years later, the Shikamaga moved further west and southwest. Wow into present day Al or All or El Abba Ama Alabama come establishing five larger settlements. They were then more commonly known as Lower Cherokee, a term closely associated with the people of the five lower towns. There was a division due to seeding of land. So it was all about land, man. They were tired of giving up land. So Dragon Canoe, which became the first Shikamagua chief, separated from the upper Cherokee. There was a division among the, amongst the Cherokee and can be demonstrated by a letter sent from Thomas Jefferson, May 4, 1808, in a letter addressed to the chiefs of the upper Cherokee. In this letter, which is found, he didn't say chief of the lower Cherokee, right? So he's trying to tribe up with the upper Cherokee, again, divide and conquer, right? 
Because they couldn't have conquered us without us, man. Conquering ourselves. That is the snake eating its tail, the Ouroboros, or the dragon eating its own tail. And you're wondering why you lack it. You're eating your own tail, wondering why you lack it, my nigga. Make it make sense. Jefferson said, you propose, my children, my children, <laughs> that your nation shall be divided into two and that your part, the upper Cherokee, shall be separated from the lower by a fixed boundary, shall be placed under the, under the government of the United States, under the government, understand <laughs> your place under the government. And become citizens thereof, slaves, and be ruled by our laws, not Hawa, not Most High, over everything. And fine to be our brothers instead of our children. So to be our brothers, you got to be a slave, a citizen. You got to be under us. Long story short, this is what the Shikamaga War is all about, man. And in this Revolutionary War, they had to deal with these Cherokees that didn't want to sign no treaties, that didn't want to make no deals like the majority of Cherokee wished to make a deal, a treaty of peace and friendship. Now, go dig on a treaty of peace and friendship. <laughs> 17, what, 85, whatever. And that's all this, the Moorish Confederacy, right? Okay. Okay. Okay, boss. Bound, which gets five degrees, and the last five degrees are Saturn's bound. So when Pluto moved into Aquarius for the first time on April the 4th, 1777, the American Revolutionary War was already raging. It's generally seen to have begun with the Battle of Lexington on April the 19th, 1775. At that time, Pluto was in the Mars bound of Capricorn. And that is an interesting echo of our current time because the Ukraine war began with the Russian invasion in February, 2022 with Pluto in that Mars bound of Capricorn. Now the American Declaration of Independence of July the 4th 1776 also came with Pluto in that Mars bound. Mars was the warrior planet. It acts through cutting and severing and the Americans severed themselves from the British Empire to forge a new nation. And what about France? At this time French society... They like giving white history right so yeah these white Americans separated from these white Europeans no. Black ass King George was over there having these so called whites in captivity in Europe. And these Moors had so called white people in captivity in Europe. And they came to America and tried to separate from black nobles in Europe by slaughtering black nobles in America. Dragonfly perspective. Society was structured by what would later be called the Ancien Régime, the Old Régime. The Ancien Régime was headed by an absolute monarch, Louis XVI of the Bourbon dynasty. Right. And society comprised three estates. The first estate, the clergy, the second estate, the nobility, and the third estate, the commoners. And in terms of rights and the burden of taxation, the commoners got a raw deal, but change was in the air. The peasantry was finding the burden of exploitation and taxation increasingly intolerable. And a new class Ooh, had risen, the bourgeoisie, the merchants, manufacturers and professionals. Many of these people had grown wealthier than the aristocracy, but they remained legally subordinate to them. They were growing dissatisfied too. So that's the political side, but we should also bear in mind that this was the era of the first industrial revolution. Manufacturing was being transformed by inventions like the steam engine and the spinning jenny. These were inventions that would shape the coming age of Earth, just as information technology is shaping our age of air. Now, if you're enjoying this content, I would really appreciate it if you just click that little like button. It really helps. Hey, hey, hi, Jackson. Uh, we appreciate you, man. Trust me, man. Uh, let's go. <laughs> that was the intro. <laughs> let's get to the drop. Chronicle of the trail. Remember this drop? You know, I just redropped some of that Black Yahawashire on the tube. Man, y'all been enjoying that. We dropped a couple parts. 
I started with part two and three. Uh, but really, those are all like pieces of a conclusive part. You know what I'm saying? So go get that. Uh, and then I'll probably drop part one last. It's like little 10 minute drops. Just dropping a drop, man. Just dropping a drop. And this is very interesting drop chronicle the trail journey of El Camino Real de Tierra Adentro Trail Association, volume 12, number two, fall, winter 2016. All right, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's get into this uh, Yahweh shot, man, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that train's never late, man. Uh, you got the link. A lot of y'all hit me up for these links, so I'm going to leave a lot of them right here for you, man. Right here for you. All right, you know, I'm just doing some belly flopping, man. Let's go. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it like this. Oh, wow. Yo, get this drop, though, because we still ain't gone through the whole thing yet. And, you know, <laughs> since our intro was nearly two hours long, <laughs> we're going to go swift, man. So buckle your boot bones, put on your, you know, rain boots and get this drop, my nigga. <clears throat> However, let's get the conclusion. Diverse, the origin stories of the various devotional images of our Lord of Equipulis. Almost all provide an explanation for the black skin color. Since they want to turn blue eyed blonde haired Jesus black, and instead of calling him Jesus in these camps, they call him Yahweh Shai Yeshua Hamashiach. Right. The black skin color that got y'all tripping and acting like, oh, it's ours, it's ours. Maybe you forgot that Zeus is black. Maybe you forgot all these Egyptian gods are black. Hercules, uh, their god of Ra and Thoth, all of them are black. All of them are wicked, right? All of them are black. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. So you're tripping on this black thing. Maybe you forgot there's a more and more war. Black on black crime, right? So this explanation for black skin color with most attributing it to the miraculous transformation occasioned by divine will so something about this miraculous transform it's a miracle for this black skin this melanin wow. <laughs> wow this black is a is a miracle it's a miraculous transformation occasioned by hawa divine will our research indicates that the majority of the acts of miraculous revelation Attributed to the black Christ. Huh? <laughs> Yahweh. Christ means anointed in the Greek, right? Convey a sense, clear sense of indigenous identity. What does it mean, Dra? In 2024, you had a drag. It means your blackness can't save you. It is your indigenous identity. Black Christ, why you know, <laughs> we're just talking anointed, but who's anointed? The anointed of the Greeks or the anointed of the Hebrews? You change his name from Jesus to Ye Yeshua again, you could change it to Skittles, boss. It don't change the character, it don't change the so called hero of the New Testament, it don't change the hijack. It don't, I don't care what you call it. Call him Tommy, call him Robbie, but it's Robbie. It's not Jesus. You can't do your word magic drop and say Jesus or Jesus. Don't do that drop. Stop it, drop. <laughs> drop. Don't talk about Jesus. Uh, God worship. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't do it. Drop. Don't mention that Jesus is Esau's is Jesus or Hell Zeus. Hell Zeus. Spaniards always got some drop. 
Jesus, a Celtic god who was worshipped primarily in ancient Gaul and Britain, England. What do your taxpayer dollars go, boss? He is known from two monumental statues in the line of Lucan, Bellium, Bel, Baal, Seville. And I, he's over here cutting down a tree, boss. Huh? I, I literally can't make this stuff up, right? And both these Isus is portrayed cutting branches from trees with his axe. And how do you celebrate Jesus <laughs> birth in Christmas time, right? You cut down these trees, put them in your house. Everything that was it Joshua chapter 10 tell you not to do. Cutting down the trees like a pagan. Because they cut down these trees like Jesus and worship <laughs> their powers. Now, the letter J was invented in the 16th, 17th century. So they just put the J on there, man. Oh, no, drop. But his name is Yeshua. <laughs> but you're talking about the same power. You're just Hebrewizing his name. You turned his name to Skittles. It don't matter. Because Yeshua does not transliterate from Jesus at all. Prove it, boss. Prove it, boss. Let's go quickly. So this black Christ, this Jesus, convey a clear sense of indigenous identity. They first had to create something that looked like you to get you to fall for it and say it's black, black power. Black History Month, boss. You want some black history? <laughs> Talk about um, the more and more war. Talk about the Zeus, E. Zeus connection, man. Talk about the Chicamagua if you really want to talk about indigenous Negro history, right? Based on our analysis, the figure symbolizes the condition and fate of the indigenous population. The what? The figure. What figure? Black Christ. Yahweh is a symbol of your fate as an indigenous God. Your condition as a Negro population. As a suppressed population, exploited Nagas population like the NFL. All those big ass niggas should be on the front line protecting the cons. I said protecting the cons. Instead, they're getting their paycheck and moving out the hood, right? Exploited, multi ethnic people who can only find hope in the martyred Christ. Why can you only find hope in JC? Because you got no hope in Hawa. You forgot the name of Hawa. Because like them, he was persecuted. Like who? Like them. Like who? Like the indigenous. Like who? Like the blacks, <laughs> so called, right? They're bringing in skin color, man. So you know that these indigenous connect directly with the blacks, man. Stop playing with us. Copper color races found here relate to the same black people you're calling today that are the martyred, suppressed, and exploited. Nobody been exploited like these so-called black people. Nobody been suppressed like us. You might have gotten collateral damage, man, but you are not the target. Stop playing. They found blacks when they came to America like uh, my man uh, Benjamin Franklin said in Observations of Mankind in 1751 they found suppressed niggas, exploited niggas martyred niggas and because you were martyred like them <laughs> he was persecuted they created a persecuted idol 
an idol persecuted by his enemies who consigned him to the cross. But in the book of Acts, it says he was hung from a tree. So y'all got to figure this out because we was hung from trees. Strange fruit, strange fruit. Nina Simone take the wheel. The crucifixion, therefore, should be understood as a reflection of what? <laughs> a reflection. A phantom. A duplication of what? The blacks. So the black anointed is a reflection of the blacks. The indigenous. It's just a reflection of the suppressed and exploited. The real martyred and crucified Nagas hung on trees, slaughtered, babies dashed on rocks, women turned upside down. They poured vinegar in our women and our sisters' private parts. You understand? So their martyring has nothing to, has nothing on what happened to our sisters. Their martyring had nothing has nothing on what happened to Hawaii's children here and Christianized reedification. So this fake ass crucifixion of JC, Yahweh Shai, same story. Did your Yahweh Shai get crucified just like Jesus? It's the same nigga <laughs> who's just a reflection of you, a Christianized reedification of the drama of the Spanish conquest right here in America. Back to the Book of Mormon, right? The Lord's resurrection offers to indigenous people a symbolic or the hijacked Christ resur resurrection is a symbolic space of resistance. But you are the real resistance, the real revolution. And don't you be anti-revolution, boss. Because now you're anti-American. I said, come. This Christmas, Jesus cutting down these trees with his axe. Yeah. Is against the Shikamako, the indigenous kind. Symbolic of the indigenous people's identity, the melanated Nagas that are at war more and more with each other. Dragon Canoe was fighting other niggas, Tukumse was fighting more niggas. Don't act like you was on the front lines, boss. <laughs> no, you weren't. This is a nigga conversation. If you're not ready to have that conversation, you're not ready because you still got covetous in your heart bone for niggas. You want to be a nigga? You want to act like a nigga? You want to talk like a nigga? You want to dress like a nigga? But you don't want to get a niggas, you know, their separation, their their due, you know what I'm saying, appreciation when it comes for the genocide, the exploiting, the suppression. You want to act like this is you too. You ain't never claimed to be black. But you talk black, walk black, you want to act black, but you're covetous of these blacks. You're covetous of these niggas. You're covetous of our pain. You're covetous of our suffering and suppression exploitation and now you want to act like you are us <laughs> and it, and that we've been mixed out and done away with and that we're not still the creator see you never read Deuteronomy 28 you apply it to your people because they taught you to collateral damage is collateral damage but you were not the target you were not Put on the towel, the mark, the sign, the covenant, 
ain't resting within your tribe. You got to get in where you fit in, man. You got to keep the code. And that covetous will separate you from salvation if you don't check it, man. People think they code keepers with all this jealousy in their heart, man, towards black skin color. They weren't targeting you when they were hanging niggas on trees, spraying us with water hoses, putting us in the back of the bus. <laughs> nah, they created an idol that is a reflection, a reedification of the invasion of these Spaniards that also look like us. So their JC's resurrection offers to these copper color races found here a symbol of resistance <laughs> as well as hope for their own liberation but it does not offer you the truth of your indigenous power hawa the original syncretism which means the fusing together of opposites or the coming together of opposites which in alchemy is the conientio of the image, which we're not supposed to have these graven images, rule number one, most high over everything. It's a fusion of symbols from pre-Hispanic, which means you're talking about paganism, Mesoamerican, hijack, as well as Christian imaginaries, pagan, hijack, eventually linked to commercial agents who broadcast the image what does it say in the Apocrypha and Mordecai? They paint their own images. They put their own images in our books. Graven image. Loses meaning when confronted with the ethnic blending that resulted from this Spanish invasion. First indigenous peoples and later people of mixed race. First, the Shikamagua, right? And later, you got the collateral damage of everybody else claiming all this stuff happened to them, too. It happened to us, too. But you're not the target. You're covetous of the target. You want to be the target so bad. You want to be us so bad that you're covetous, man. And that is your separation. It ain't like somebody don't appreciate you or your priestly nature. But we can vibe off your covetousness and you don't smell your own shit because you've been in the bathroom taking the shit. It's in you, but we smell your shit. But you don't acknowledge your own stinky ass, shitty ass smell. We smell that you're covetous because you're telling us that we are mixed out and washed up. <laughs> you don't want us to succeed. You want to be us, my nag. So if I say my naga, then you a nag. If I say my con, then you a con. But if I say black, oh no. <laughs> you never claim to be black. But now that we know black is wicked, you say, well, black's just wicked. <laughs> I gave you that out. I gave you that lane. <laughs> you didn't have that before. Before, you just weren't claiming black. You were claiming what you were claiming. But now you're claiming to be us. You're claiming to be a Hebrew. You're claiming to be a con. You're claiming to be a naga. You still following indigenous energy, frequency, and vibration. Follow Hawa. Keep the code and get the covetous out your heart bone. All my mixed race people. Symbolically reappropriated the image to look like them. <laughs> but first they had to make the black Christ their own. So the camps are worshiping this same black Christ to this day. They turn blue-eyed blue Jesus into this Afro fire-eyed Naga Jesus. <laughs> Fake-ass Super Naga. Because obviously the real Super Naga, my Naga, is a Naga. It's a real Naga, you know what I'm saying, with supreme energy, frequency, and vibration. They can't make that their own, so they have to make the image their own. The symbol their own. Yeah.
So they worship copper colored Jesus. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Rule number one. Allow why I am a why who brought you out of Egypt, man, bondage, right? You should have no other gods before me. Don't worship black people. <laughs> Don't worship no man. Only Hawa. Thou shalt not make unto thee a graven image. Thou shalt not make unto thee to you a graven image. Oh no, 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 no. No, 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 no. That's just rule number one. Let's go. Get to Rainbow. Ketsu's flying high in the Monte Verde cloud forest. Love the Cootie Mayo, right? Yeah, you're talking about Costa Rica. We're talking about the cloud forest, man. We're talking about all this, right? So people come from all over the world to see the famous resplendent Ketsu's. Quetzals. So before they say Quetzalcoatl, like some type of serpent, yada, yada, you're talking rainbow cloud force which means they live high in the ether in the ether way these birds represent some of the most beautiful birds in the world and are found in the cloud forests of central america from southern mexico to cloud forests of monte Verde to panama the quetzals are famed for their beauty with a good reason they are brightly colored with vibrant shades iridescent greens and brilliant reds <laughs> yeah man the males are more brightly colored than the female and during mating season the males grow two very long tail feathers that can be as long as one meter their heads have a crest of feathers like a crown <laughs> that look like mohawks man the quetzal is much loved in Central America and is actually the national bird of Guatemala or Guatemala to the Hebrew. And they even named their monetary unit the Quetzal. So that's how they even deal with the monetary flow. Not dollars, but Quetzals. Uh oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the ancient Guatemalans, the Mayans, and the Aztecs preferred the sacred bird using the tail or yeah tail feathers in their headdress yeah we're talking costa rica <laughs> yeah the quetzals quetzalcoatl book of the beginnings right yeah we back there paco take the wheel Remember, as Shu and Anhar in Egyptian mythology, the Mo and Moses and Joshua conducted their people with the solar orb round the circle of signs. We're just talking Tao. Overcoming the opposing powers postulated by the early men, so in the Toltec mythology or history, Hawa, H U E, is Hawa as well, Mak, or Hawa Matsin. And Quetzalcoatl conducted their people through pilgrimages, right? The wandering tribe, right? And Quetzalcoatl conducted their people through the pilgrimages and wanderings recorded in the picture writing. So this Quetzal bird, right? This rainbow and Quetzalcoatl is dragon, like the Papa Vu be telling us. The Hawa Mike, like Moshe wrote the code. So here's a connection to dig on. You got a wild mock like Moses wrote the code of laws for the nation and conducted the civil government. Gets a quad in relation to how mock plays the part of Hawashua, Joshua. Choose your Joshua. They turned us into Jesus later. But the real Joshua is the one who literally brought you to the promised land. When Quetzalcoatl began to give the laws instead of a wild mock, 
He sent a crier to the top of the mountain of outcry whose voice could be heard for 300 miles. Right? Joshua literally brought you to the promised land, my night. He didn't do no water to wine, walking on water. He made the sun stand still, the moon stand still. <laughs> Waterfalls had to cease. And he made the tribe cross on dry land, parted the waters from the waters, just like Moshe. So the tribe can cross the river on dry land. This is greater magic than walking on water, water to wine. They are showing lesser magic versus greater magic. And you got to choose your Joshua. What's greater, walking on water or parting the waters for the tribe to cross? What's greater, water to wine or stopping the sun in its tracks, which lets you know we're not spinning around the sun. The sun is making a circuit around us. And Joshua had to stop the sun in its tracks. So Hawamak, like Moses, wrote the code of laws for the nation and conducted the civil government. Kitsukawado, in relation to Hawamak, placed a part of Joshua when Kitsukawado began to give the laws instead of Hawamak. He sent a crier to the top of the mountain of outcry whose voice could be heard for 300 miles, boss. Joshua follows Moses, Moshe, as the leader of Israel. And instructs the people to go up against Jericho, his mount of outcry, and to sell it with a shout that ought to be have heard at an equal distance. 300 miles is a long distance to hear a sound, man. And it was loud enough to make the walls fall flat. The old red lands, Hawa Hawa Tapalan, was the name of the original home in the north from which the Toltecs migrated. Their leader, Kitsa, Quetzal, right, Rainbow Dragon, wore a long robe marked with crosses. The sign identifies him as the one who crosses, like the tribe had to cross on dry land. Joshua, right? Quetzalcoatl attained the land of promise, and in his golden reign, an ear of wheat grew so large that one man could hardly carry it. Joshua led the people into the land flowing with milk and honey, where a single bunch of grapes was a load for two men. Moses is placed in the cleft of the rock while the Lord goes by, and tradition asserts the print of his body to have been engraved on the stone, visible to this day. The impression of the land of Hawama is likely said to have been stamped in a rock, my knife. So when we talk Kitzel, like the Mormons know, you're talking about a priest king. They put the JC on it. You got to bring it back to Joshua. Mm, a while ago. You know, so we got in this pop of love, right? About the framer and the shaper. <laughs> and the Papa Va got these multiple creations. So we say all the time, <clears throat> Shalaka, you know, it wasn't just one pop offness of Adam and Eve, man. It was, according to the indigenous guys, like multiple pop offnesses. You know, not everybody was created in the same creation. You know, what I mean, not everyone is con connected to the creation. <clears throat> <clears throat> of a wahwa, you know, we got a lot of creations, creations popping off. You know, there's the creator's creation and there's the creations, <laughs> creation. And man, we got a lot of digging to do to decipher, to see clearly. But again, you know, <laughs> Hey, 2024 year of the dragon. We got to get a lot of this like it's the first time. So you're going to see me dropping a lot of 
2017 drop, <laughs> 16, 18, whatever, 19, because, you know, some of the cons were ready for it then, and a lot of cons, you know, were not conscious yet. So uh, the awareness is kicking in at a high vibration. Even if we got it then and you thought you were aware or conscious, you definitely weren't as aware or as conscious as you are today. So a lot of that might have went over our head bones. But in general, when we talk about framer, shaper, right? Quetzalcoatl or Quetzal, they call serpent or dragon. Translations, translations. We do our best, right? Zakato or Zako, framer, refers to one who makes something by putting things together. That's what they would call in Christianity as wisdom, right? Puts it all together. A building from stone or adobe, a meal, right? Mama makes a meal from various ingredients. <laughs> a woven cloth from individual thread. No. Daddy, big pops, right? Our father refers, or betol, shaper, refers to one who makes something by modeling or molding or shaping. Pottery from clay, i.e. pottery from clay, sculpture from car stone. Thus giving shape, which is vibration. Because everything is in a vibration, which creates a shape to an otherwise amorphous substance. The framer and the shape, come on, which we got in Hebrew as <gasps> wow, right? The ha, the wa, the breath, the security are the most frequently mentioned gods or powers involved in the creation of the world. And its inhabitants. No other power is more mentioned to the indigenous con about creation than the framer and the shaper. And this is from Domenico de Vicio, right? This is their own missionaries talking. But you don't hear them talking like this no more. Their names imply the creation, that the creation involved giving frame and shape to matter that already existed. So the earth was a void, and frameless and shapeless, right, at first, and then it was given shape, in other words. The vibration was already in existence, you know what I'm saying? But everything is now being framed and shaped. Proverbs chapter 8, Mama says, I was there before these mountains were formed and water was flowing like, I was there before the frame and shape was given, which lets you know that mama had her hand, had her hand, unless you thoughtless, mama had her hand in all creation because she was there before any of that which was created was created. She says she's she's the first of Hawa, the first of your father's <laughs> uh, works, right? Which could mean a lot of different things. <laughs> so, um, you know, she's daily at his side right daily delight right so dancing <laughs> dancing you know um you know just there as a presence you know what i'm saying which sounds like a love connection right so this pair of powers was so important that soon after the spanish conquest or invasion father domenico de vicio used their quiche root names because quiche means the root Kish refers to their root names refer to the God of the Old Testament. I said, I'm not the one separating and breaking up and dividing the power of the Old Testament and the power of the New Testament. In the Papuva, clearly it's already been divided. The power of the Old Testament is not, cannot be the power of the New Testament and even their own Catholic fathers already knew this. That the root name, when we call, when we talk, frame or shaper, tis akol or bitol, or in Hebrew, ha wa, hawa hawa, Hawaii, right? Refer to the power of the Old Testament, but it refers to a marriage of your mother, who they call wisdom. Or Proverbs eight says, "Keep my way." <laughs> Keep my ways, right? Because 
the code is your mother's ways as much as it is your father's ways. You walk into a house that's in order. Your mother's ways aren't underneath your father's ways. They are one. You better not piss off the mama of the house, right? The queen of the house at all, right? So it goes the same way. So she's the one that's putting everything together. All the ingredients into a fine meal. So you can eat and get that zan zan. Ha, wa, zan. That's the fifth letter, sixth letter, seventh letter. The zan is the zion, which means food. Nourishment. You want that nourished belly from all these ingredients. You're going to have to ask Big Mama for that. We're talking about the God of the Old Testament specifically. Let's go. I am that I am. Aya. Right? <laughs> Back to the Aya. Right? <laughs> again and again, which they put H A W. Letting you know that there's a hall involved. And maybe it's a falling out if you're out of code. Or maybe it's existence when you're in code. To be, to become, I am, right? Came into being. What's nature? The one with the being. You want a continuation? You want existence right existing right so when they talk Yahweh <laughs> yeah Yahweh backwards is how how <laughs> hey or how wow and when they reverse it, you got to reverse it back. And dodge all hijack. Their hypothetical is not reality. They didn't say yod hey vav They said yod hey wa Right? They put the wa back in it. But they're hijacking it with the ya, which is unnecessary. Because the hawa is a Hebrew verb meaning existence. And that ya is an exclamation of defiance put after 1812. And 1812 refers to the Battle of the Kumse. Based on the assumption that the Tetragrammaton is the imperfective <laughs> of the Hebrew verb, uh, wow. which is earlier Managa, than the Heya. So in the Strong's Concordance, they'll take you to the Heya, right, existing. They'll take you to the Heya, right, but will they take you to the Hawa? Or do you and your Ruach have to go a little step further to get the drive? I mean, you know. To get that water. Because Drop Nation, we got that water. A lot of water. Yeah. Earlier form of Aya is Hawa in the sense the one who is the existing. Existing. Yeah, hey, right. <laughs> Hawa. Hawa. To be, to become. Existed. Exists. Now, Hawa can be exhausted with you. Have a falling out. <laughs> or it can be your continuation. 
your help, your occurrence exists. I am that I am is telling the tribe I exist, the one who exists to be I am, the one who is the existing. Hey, yeah. Earlier on, how well. Can't make this stuff about why. It's our time, that's why we know. No more explanation of the fine. We talk, yeah, yeah. He didn't say, I am that I am, yeah, yeah. He said, Framer Shaper, the power of the Tanakh, the Old Testament, right? He didn't put the exclamation of defiance on it. He's not talking to Yud or Yod after you eat, after you get the food, after you get the nourishment, after you get the Zod. No, you got your Hawa before you ate in order to eat the breath and security. We didn't need their explanation of defiance or dismissal, but when they put the Yah on the Wa or the Yahweh, it gave you or them defiance and dismissing the Wa, which is the security. They dismissed your security. They dismissed your father from 1812, right? Yeah, they dismissed your security from 1812. Wow. Wow, wow. They dismissed your <laughs> creator. I can't make this up. I'm not making these dates up. They said 1812. We say what happened in 1812 to Colm say. Ta Colm. Colm means to rise. They dismiss your rock uprising, man. Your revelation. They're anti America. They brought up 1777. Pluto and Aquarius, first time in 1777. I said, what really happened? Oh, it was the pop-off of the Shikamaga War. Okay. Let's go. For the dismount. <laughs> I'll praise the one, you know, put it on my heart bone, man, just to make one more strong blitz in the face bone of Hijack City on this fake ass Messiah. So that we can see the real with a dragonfly perspective. No more hell Zeus, man. Oh no. The name of hundred years old approximately because the English language never had a letter J to the this is very important, my life, because it says in the Bible, by one name shall you be saved. So it becomes frightfully important <laughs> because it is a recent name not known by the Almighty. In fact, the original King James Bible had the name Jesus with an I. This is also a historical record of the fact the name Jesus is a very modern name in terms of history, but y'all are calling on Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in church, right? Every Sunday. <laughs> oh, Jesus, my Savior. Jesus is God. Blasphemy, my nigga. Blasphemy. We are blitzing the face bone of this hijack one more time, man, before the uh, uh, solar eclipse, man. <laughs> before this new year, we gonna, this is, we giving it one more good blitz. For my Naga's ready to see clearly. 
Then on the flip side of the subject, we have the Greek god Zeus, who is the representation of the sun god. You go to church on the Sunday to praise the son of God. S-O-N is S-U-N. Stop playing. Who is the devil? As known by ancient cultures, here below is some inform information on the subject, but take into account no name beginning with the letter J can be attributed to the Almighty. So the name Jehovah cannot be the name of the Almighty. Jeshua. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not talking about Joshua's power. We talk about Jehovah, man. We have a clue to the name of the Almighty from the scripture, the word hallelujah, which means praise Yah. Ah, well, you know. <laughs> We're just talking exclamations of defiance or dismissal. So you see the hijack can't lead you back <laughs> to your water. You're going to have to dig a little deeper to go from the Yahweh's or the Yah's. Right? You flip the Yah, you got the hey, right? The ha, come. You keep going, right? You got the breath. But what's breath without security? Yah on the wa or way, right? They put defiance on the father or shaper. What foundation, your security. But we know the earlier form is a wa. The one who is the existing. The water. Because you got the water. Da wa da. The water. The water is da wa da. So they can only take you so far. But regardless if you get the name, absolutely this, or when I say we are, you know, on point in all these ways, I'm just saying, like, at least stop putting a power or this JC or this Zeus before your creator, man, or acknowledging any of this hijack. Shout out to Reformation.org. We understand <laughs> that the Ra in Egypt was the equivalent of Zeus. So if you're into this Egyptologies and this Ra thoughtisms, you see Zeus, Greek Zeus, yada yada Jesus. They say Shiva is the Indian equivalent of Zeus. It's kind of, sort of, but Shiva is really Shiva. Now, some will equate male, female, prop, male or female properties to the Shiva, whether we're talking Joshua, the real Joshua, not their Yeshua or Jesus, or Shiva, like Khalifa, you know what I mean? Who they call goddess of destruction, but who is she destroying? They call our dragons destructive, but who are they destroying? Dragonfly perspective. But in general, Zeus is the head guy of the Greek. You don't think they brought their gods to America when they conquered America? You think they left their gods behind after giving them such a pleasant treat of prosperity and slaughter in America? You celebrating Christmas for a reason, man. According to the Holy Bible, Satan's kingdom is high or hierarchical, hierarchical, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the evil one assigns the most powerful 
demons to rule over the various nations. Daniel the prophet saw all this in a vision given to him personally by <gasps> why? Wow. See how they put the V in their whole vibe, right? They changed the V's from W's to V's and they put the Y on it. Then he, Hawa, said, do you know why I've come to you and now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia and when I have gone forth, lo, the prince of Greece will come, Daniel 10. Uh-oh. After his stoning at Lystria, St. Paul had a global view of the stationary, stationary, stationary earth when he was caught up to the third heaven. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of the world, right? All this New Testament hijacked, but there's always some babies in the bathwater against spiritual wickedness in high places. And some translations say against the governments. <laughs> the rulers of the dark world are the governing powers or the governments. Now the most powerful of Satan's principalities wow. is called Zeus or the Prince of Greece. Zeus plays second fiddle to nobody, not even Jupiter. So you think they left Zeus behind when they hijacked America? the indigenous here or did they rebrand and repackage Zeus into hey Zeus my nigga come on man <laughs> Satan's demons have different names in different countries Zeus is the head demon in Greek hi hierarchy in Britannia the head demon is Jesus <laughs> the same dude cutting down the Christmas trees right the head demon is is, is Isus, man, which is Zeus. Isus is portrayed cutting branches from trees, man. <laughs> right in your face. <laughs> Zeus and Isus demand bloody human sacrifice. What you think happened around Christmas time? Halloween. Huh? <laughs> yeah, man. In Egypt, the old serpent appeared everywhere even on Pharaoh's crown. So they're into the alchemical serpent, right? We're into the alchemical dragon. That's the, you know, vessel in which the spirit is contained. And alchemy is the guardian of your Ruach. They're into the uh, androgyny, right? Baphomet, coming together of opposites. Connie and Shio brings things to life and yet kills everything. Kills everything. When he was known by Amun Ra. We still just talking to Zeus. Kalelu. So before the time period they're giving us 1777 revolution. 1452 Columbus sells the ocean blue. Of course, we know. <laughs> That we already got prehistory or forbidden history already happening with the Hebrews, not Jewish Hebrews in America, because there weren't no Jewish popping off in America in those 700s. <laughs> or else they'll be claiming it left and right. Then they got to claim to be the indigenous Toltecs and Aztecs and all this stuff. Then they got to claim to be the ones that were persecuted and genocided on in America. And if that were true, they wouldn't even be talking about what happened in Germany and Hitler. <laughs> They'll just be talking about America because that's really where the gold is, right? But since they never talk about being indigenous to America, then this Jewish colony in America don't exist. We're talking Hebrew kingdoms right here, the kingdom of Israel. In 1920s, love to Michael Rourke, blog, that blog. Hmm. In the 1920s in Tucson, Arizona, were found objects and writings in Latin, Greek, and Hebrew with both Catholic, Cathay, Cathay, and Hebrew. When I see Jewish, I'm going to say Hebrew. God, when I say Roman, I'm going to say Ramon. Because Ramon in Hebrew means what? Pomegranate. Ramon, R-I-M-O-N, which means what? The promised land. I had to get the pomegranates to prove he was in the promised land. So, they hijack Roman from Ramon in Hebrew, connected with the 
promised land of America. God. Cyclone Covey describes this discovery in his book, Kalelus, a Romani Hebrew colony in America from the time of Charlemagne through Alfred the Great Covey and other researchers are amazed at the mixture of Hebrew, Christian, and Kabbalistic, Kabbalistic objects and symbols. However, this is very much fits the in the 8th century, 700s, when the Carolingian Kara, Kara, Kara Katan, Kara means black in Turkey. Empire, there is a Hebrew principality in southern France called Septimania. Seven, sept, seven, sept, seven cities of gold oh, 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 ruled by Theodoric of Norbon, right? Makir to those. Ben Hawauda, Judah. So now Judah is in play in the 700s in America. Magnari. Hmm, it's a magneto, man. Amari or Ameri. Ameri, Managi is America. Or Amar Ben Amar. Hmm, 700s, right? Many members of his family descended from the exilarchs of Babylon. Well, let's get back to that Babylon flow, right? <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. Let's get back to Babylon. Who or who is Preston Child? And why is his son, Axelark David the Sixth of Sauslan of Babylon? And Georgia, we're gonna get back on press the 131. Hey, y'all surfing away. We on Press the John Part 131. We're gonna talk the House of Georgia right here in America. And Babylon, right? Come. Uh, Babylon, right? Come. Okay. Okay. For the dismount. For the dismount. <laughs> so much drop. So we're talking about Amari or Amer, which is what America's named after. Amer. 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 Many members of his family descend from the exilarchs of Babylon. And the exilarchs of Babylon connect right back to Prestige. Exilarchs of Babylon. I cannot make this stuff up for the dismount. Who's Prestige? <laughs> Exilarchs of Babylon embraced a Hebrew form of Catholicism. A he what's a Hebrew form of Catholicism? We're talking about a Hebrew form of Cathay. <laughs> and Cathay means pure land. So you're talking about the Hebrew pure land, not Catholicism or Jewish, but the real Cathay and the real Judah. Not Jewish, but Judah. Not Catholicisms. Dodge the isms and dodge the issues, man. We're talking about Cathay. Kara Katai. Katai is Cathay. Katai, the Kara Katai, were under priest King Wong Kong Prasacha. Wong. Talking about the king, like John means king. Like Wong means king. Ka, priest. So who's under the priesthood of the priest king? The Preston. The Preston John. Babylon is like Babel, like where languages are mixed, like a mixture of people, like the mixed multitudes would be considered a Babylon. Like the Bible is a Biblios, it's a mixture, syncretinized. Cathay, while other members remained outwardly orthodox. <laughs> Jews. Okay. Then they get into the artifacts. And again, the Kalelu's records speak of Theodorus as a leader of many peoples who leave the Romani pomegranate promised land lands for Kalelu's, which means promised land. Love to uh, Daniel Law. 775 Covey and others believe that Theodorus is the Hebrew leader in the city of Rome. When we're talking Romani, the Hebrew. 
kingdom, Israel. However, this is too literal reading of the term Rome. Theodorus is none other than the Hebrew king of the seven cities of gold or the Septimania, a Romani Hebrew state wow. in southern France. We're talking Canada, Canada. We're talking Tangu. He is the son of the first Hebrew king of the Septimania, also known as Theodoric, Theodoric, Thierry, Ameri, De Narbonne, Makir, Tadros, Theodorus, Dietrich, Theodoric, Ameri, Ichitif, Nehemiah, Namon, Amor, Ben Amor, my nigga. <laughs> was also known as Theodore, king of Saxony, and as Namus, duke of Bavaria. He and his brothers were great warrior Davidic princes of the time of Charlemagne, boss. Yeah, we're talking David. Davidic princes in America. Professor Arthur Zuckerman, in his book, A Jewish Princedom in Feudal France, confuses him with his father, who bears the same Frankish names. Remember the Franks and the Rus and Rus were tribed up against the hijack. So that's why you're gonna hear these Frank talk, right? Who are Nagas and names of Theoderic and Amari. On the death of his father, Machia Theodoric in about 765 AD, Nia Theodoric becomes the Western Exilar, right? and leader of all the Hebrews of the revived Western Remani Empire of Charlemagne. And bang, is that 775, Nehemiah Theodore reconquers the American Empire of Calalus. Calalus was ruled by the Sylvanus to Texas or Solomon, my knock. Uh-oh, Solomon in the American Empire? You didn't just get brought over here. Just, you know, <laughs> discovered somebody else. No, he, he found India superior, right? Hereditary ruler of the former Hebrew rule, Ramani colony. Calalus was founded in the first century BC by the Babylonian exilarch known as Sylvanus Ogam or Sylvanus Rabo or Solomon II. Babylonian exilarch, Nasi Amar, ruler of Sumer, in Britain, Somerset in britain and britain means covenant right a great romani hebrew ruler soldier and ancestor of the swan knights my night yeah columbus found knights and he brought a hebrew interpreter named louis torres to speak hebrew in this hebrew kingdom the swan in hebrew is babar look up babar hebrew you'll get swan my night <laughs> So these barbars and these Barbary Wars, what do we get here? Tecumseh, right? 1812, Tecumseh War. Shikamago, Shikamago, Shikamago. First Barbary War, Barbary, 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 but what's the Barbar? <sighs> For the dismount, we out of here, boss. All praise the world. Um, you know, it's just y'all. Let me know if I'm overdropping. Uh, you know, I don't feel like I'm overdropping. Maybe to the hijack. You know, <laughs> we understand that Babar means swan, right? Got that water. Got that water. Swans are swimming in that water. <laughs> Hebrew word of the day. What is it? Who could tell me the Hebrew word of the day? Hebrew word of the day. 
Baba. Talking swan knights. So Solomon had a whole fleet of these swan boats, and they look like beautiful gliding white swans, according to Daniel Lowe in the Forbidden History of America. Be patient with us, you know, this is the part of the presentation, you know, we're always at the end, they like to slow our, our net down, and that's okay, they try to slow down our internet, but it's all good, <laughs> it be running just fine, and then they try to jam us up right, right when it counts, but they don't know that we got that water, so whenever this happens, just take a nice deep, <sighs> Wow, I know I got a lot of tabs up, a lot of windows running, you know, all this stuff accounts for things. But please understand they're paying attention. And the hijack is never late because the indigenous truth is always Malaga. And I mean always Malaga. Right? All time. We almost out of here. <laughs> it's worth getting this drop because each, each of these drops are like time capsules. You know what I mean? And the information, you know, it comes in different varieties and different links and tabs and PDFs on different drops. But the order <laughs> remains the same. The context remains the same. Whether you're surfing away from 2016, 15, all that, to 2024. You will realize we have not changed our context, Kyle. And that's the that's the most beautiful thing I get, man, when Nagas leave their comments and stuff. You know, they always like, yo, I appreciate the consistency, man. I appreciate the context that has remained throughout all these years. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all, y'all ain't budge, man. We all praise the wall. You know, we're a strong arrow that was shot out. From a strong archer is our creator. And the arrow has not wavered. The arrow didn't go left and right and up and down. It's remained consistent, man. To hit the target. The heart bone. <laughs> of Hijack City. This arrow. Is destructive to Hijack City. But to the cons, man. It's reached our heart bone. It's hit our innermost parts, man. Our 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 spirit, our ruach, and it continues to, you know, strike that target, man, to this day, man. To this day. Hebrew word of the day. They finally gonna give it to us. Oh, we're talking swan. <laughs> Noun meaning swan in Hebrew is Baba. Okay. It's worth it, right? It's worth it because we see it, right? Barber, barber, barbary treaty, barber are the treaties on the head bone of the swan knights, the swans. I can't make that up, right? I can't do it. We can't do it. But we can serve the way and get the water like the swan got the water. Wow. <laughs> wow. Let's get it. Put it this way. Stop playing with these with these internets, man. <laughs> come, come. Swanites are more than just um, people that like swans. <laughs> the swan is the baba. La wa. Swans are the cons. When we come with the cons, we're talking Sylvanus to Texas. We're talking Sylvanus Bravo. 
And the Bravo is where they're getting the Baba. It came from the Bravo to the Babar Hakadzim, they call it, which are the Swanites in America. So Columbus didn't have to roll up on us, Swanites in America. We were rolled up by Morocco, <laughs> by the more and more treaties, by Moab in there, by Ishmael in there, right? By Esau in there, right? The Babar are the swan. No. Babar Hakazi. Now Solomon had trading vessels known as the ships of Solomon or the swan boats. The ships are shaped like a swan with its sail like the wings of a beautiful gliding white swan. After the defeat of the Sylvanus to Texas, the members of the royal family were sent back to Europe where they were under the protection of of Nehemiah Theodorus and his family. They weren't massacred, these royals. They were protected because this was a Hebrew on Hebrew war. We didn't massacre each other like that. We just took over. It was a takeover. They massacred, but they had to protect us even in Europe when they took us from America and brought us to Europe back then. We were still protected under Hebrew families in, in Europe. <laughs> back to Europe where they were under the protection of Nehemiah, other Hebrews. The legends of Dun Orgir and Ogir are based on the activities of this family descended from Duan or Duan Antegun Ogir and Sylvanus Bravo or Solomon Barbar. <laughs> so the Bravo is the Barbar. The legend of Ogir the Dane, son of Godfrey, Kadrod, and Dun De Dam De Mainz actually referred to Tuatha De Danan or Dunan, who are also known as Mananan or Ania, or Maine of America, where the giant ogre heads of the Almec are found. Oh, Caramel gonna take us out with these Almecs. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up, Kuri Mayo. So the Almec are the ogres. In these cartoons like Shrek and Cities of Gold, they make them like some gruesome looking yada yada, but these are just us, right? The Irish legend of Regamon also alludes to this family. Mmm. <laughs> it gets deeper, man. Ah, I wish I had more time. Matter of fact, we're going to pick up on this and press the 131. But we just talking. Swan knights and swan boats, and how these became the toll tax, right? Yep. Israel the third went south to the Toltec lands of Mexico, and his grandson Makir Amarik America. Or Mexcoalto of the Toltecs, which is Makir Amarik, is Mexcoalto, or Israel the Third, his granddad, was the grandfather of Tapuzin, who is Israel the Seventh, <laughs> priest of Kitsakuaro, my lord, who left Cholula for Rhoda <laughs> in about 1000 AD. So now you got the kids of Kuato story and all this popping off right about this time. You know, 1,100, all this stuff, 1,200. Now you got Genghis Khan on Press of John in 1202. And then Columbus sells the ocean blue and finds me and you in 1492. Ping pop. <laughs> all right, let's go. Oh, wow. When you got your strong power. That strong power enters your house, man, your family, your tribe. You tribe up and you gather, you move through an entrance or a door. You get the look, you get the revelation, you get the breath, you get added security. You're hooked in, you got a tent peg so your tent don't fly away and blow away. Now you can Hawaii and now you can eat your food. 
Cause you got your son. You didn't eat without your Hawa. You ate without your Yah, your Yahya, your Yahweh, your Yahawa. You ate without that. But you didn't eat without Hawa. So we bring it back to the foundation, the security. We bring it back to the revelation. We bring it back to the breath, to your Ama Aba, framer, shaper, so you can eat, cut off the hijack, and get nourished, man. That's just letters one through seven. Seventh letter, Shabbat, cut off day. Seventh letter, cut out that hijack and eat, man. After you get your <gasps> wah, which they turn into Yahweh. Because the wahs turn into the vavs. Now they got Jehovah. <laughs> Let's go for the dismount. So like I said, we'll get back to it, right? So the kids of Kowato flow, you know, they got a lot of issues. <laughs> These Mormons got a lot of issues. <laughs> and um, we know the Mormons are just Moors, man, <laughs> in reality. Wherefore, it is an abridgment of the record of the people of Nephi and also the Lamanites written to the Lamanites, who are the remnant of the house of Asherah of Israel. So they say it is a record of Hawaii's dealings with the ancient inhabitants of America, contains the fullness of the everlasting gospel. <laughs> The record gives an account of two great civilizations. One came from Jerusalem, 600 BC, dies the hijack timeline, and afterwards separated into two nations known as Nephites and Lamanites. Almost sound like northern tribe, southern tribe, right? The other came much earlier when the Lord confounded the tongues at the Tower of Babel. This group is known as the Jaredites. After thousands of years, all were destroyed except the Lamanites, and they are the principal ancestors of the American Indians. But note, past editions of the introduction of the Book of Mormon say all the people chronicled in the book were destroyed except the Lamanites, and they are the principal ancestors of the American Indians. The new introduction reads much the same, but says that Lamanites, Lamanites, are among the ancestors of the American Indians causing some debate. <laughs> Concerning this record, the prophet Joseph Smith says, quote, I told the brethren that the Book of Mormon was the most correct of any book on earth and the keystone of our religion, and a man would get nearer to God by abiding by his precepts than any other book. So we're going to dig more into that. Lawa. We got Mormons digging deeper coming in. But now you see clear. The Isus is Isus. They changed his name to Yeshua Joshua, even though it doesn't transliterate at all. So that their hijacked Zeus can have a place. And now, <laughs> Allah, wah. You know, they're not calling on the Creator as their Savior. They're calling on J.C., even the Mormons. But the Mormons are digging directly with the indigenous tribes of America. And the Quetzalcoatl refers to the Framer and the Shaper, or specifically, you know, Joshua's uh, messianic, messianic, which means messenger uh, power, you know, which is the Creator, Framer, and Shaper. But gets a Kawado. It's not Jesus. We're talking Joshua, who Moses laid his hands on in Deuteronomy 34. That's not the Joshua of the New Testament, nor is your power the God of the New Testament. It is the power of the Tanakh, my Lord. Let's go. I ain't redrawn uh, this one yet, <laughs> but I'll give you some of that uh, pre-drop right here, man. As we make our dismount, this was part three of Black 
Yahweh Shai of Esquipulis. Let's go. 2020 drop. This shit in Managa. What it do? This is part three. Get parts one and two, man. We going in, man. No hijacks allowed. Yeah. You know what I mean? No hijacks allowed. What does this figure symbolize, man? The condition and the fate. All right, so this is what happened to you, indigenous Nagas. Then they came with the image because they knew you'd be so deeply wound up in it because it symbolizes your suffering right here in America. The copper color Naga found here, right? Let's go, man. Making a dismount. And then we're going to, you know, get some great, some great drop, you know, digging on the creator. Hawa, you know, going into it, having a great time. Because we're making a victory, lap my Naga. We're going to do it for the framer, mama, and the shaper, papa, abba. We're going to do it for the ha, the breath, and the wa, the security. Because our shape, 4, 3, 2, we talk about our vibration. We talk about the word of Hawa. The word is a vibration. The vibration gives shape, right? Shape to otherwise amorphous substance. And mama, she she got the ingredients, right? She's putting the meal together. This is wisdom. This is that Shekinah. So we got on our uh, high Amazon queens, man. We're talking about the framers, man. We're talking about our sisters that's putting everything together. That's when you talk Khalifa and Sheba. When you talk about Dawi, he's in the vibration, right? The shape he's giving. He's, he's been given shape by the shaper. Mm -hmm. And this is the flow that we can now, you know, really see the path that's connecting us because we know we're not talking about no New Testament because even the even this father, Domenico Vizio, used their cliche names to refer to the God of the Old Testament. They made a marker for those that's able to see clear. Let's go. Hijack City, man. We got it. We got it. We got it. Man. That there's a different God of the Old Testament and a different God of the New Testament test man and when you go in there man when you read oh lord lord you're not talking no longer about the framer and shaper you're now talk talking about <laughs> put it right <laughs> you put it together my noggin hell who mm. right 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 and this is their mighty name. Then on the flip side of the subject, we have the Greek god Zeus, who is a representation of the sun, right? Now we worship the sun. You think you're worshiping the sun, but you're worshiping the sun. Oh. Oh. Who is the devil. We're talking the adversary because you're talking about the power that they're invading you with. And now they're giving you a what? Because he's known as the devil by the ancient ones. Oh, we got to go back in antiquity. That's when we start popping off, man. That's when we start popping off with the Papa Vu. Let's go. He's known as the devil. So that's not the God of the Old Testament, right? Who's calling it old and new? Mm -hmm. Somebody who's trying to hijack you. Mm -hmm. So he used their cliche names to refer the framer and the shaper, right? Because we're talking to not. Got it, got it. Because remember, man, remember, man, when it all said and done, you're talking about the journey. The old red land, right? You're talking about this Kitsukoto who wore a robe marked with crosses. Choose your Joshua. Kitsukoto attained the land of promise and his golden reign of ear. And in his golden reign of ear, we grew so large could hardly carry it so he brought the food he brought the corn my knock he brought the maize we're talking quetzal right so what's a quetzal have you ever heard of a 
Have you ever heard of the Quetzals, man? Let's go. The Quetzal Rainbow Birds up in the Cloud Forest. What? I'm talking the cloud forest, man. I said we up in the clouds, man. <laughs> We're talking about the rainbow birds in the clouds. So this Quetzal refers to this rainbow Kooto. We're talking dragon. The rainbow dragon. And this is a sign. This rainbow dragon in the sky. He's a sign, right? Let's go, man. We're connecting all of our Prestors. When we talk Prester, Johns, Priests, Kings. This is what we have, Israel. This is what we represent, my Nagas. We're talking priests and kings. Remember, man, let's go back. What do the Mormons call Kitsukoto? They call him their Joshua, right? Except they blend it in with this Zeus because they too have to come in this power of Isus. Huh? I said Isus. Who? I said <laughs> Isus. The J is a hijack. It just got invented in the 16th century. Isus is who we're talking about. Who? <laughs> I said, I said, Isus is who we're talking about. Monaga. Come out of the spell. Because it's all about breaking the magic spell. We got to come out the spell, Monaga, in real time, man. We still got to come out the spell, man. Of this hove situation. Uh oh. This Jehovah situation, right? This is why they keep trying to put him in. Oh, Jehovah. No, we ain't talking no hoves over here, man. Mm -hmm. Your Isus has a long history, man. And if you don't look into the Caesar, who's also called the Christ, but just know that they worship Jupiter. <laughs> if they worship Jupiter, then they're worshiping Jupiter now, my Naga. Bang. And they're giving him a new name, right? Mm. E. Seuss, huh? Bang! Oh, my knock. We just coming on home. Bring it home. We just getting up out of it, man. Coming back to the power of the old, the ancient ones. The ancient ones. We're talking about the Cloud Force and the Kitsus and the Kitsukotos. Wow. All the birds, the lofty ones, right? Because wow. they're Kitsu. They're lofty. They're making their Mashiach. Ah, but they're opening it wide up because they're letting you know that we're just talking about the Mashikan and the works of Ishila, Shila Kulotitla. <laughs> However, you want to say that. Oh, we're going to get some of this work, though. We're going to get some of this work because from his work, he's telling you that the Kitso is a beautiful bird and resplendent long green feathers and dainty crest. We're talking rainbow, right? Kooto. All right, it's the Mexican for, they say serpent. We know we're talking dragon. Because there's a difference between a snake and a dragon. The Quetzal bird serpent or this rainbow dragon. Now what? Quetzal was the name applied to the new world god or the, what they made Joshua a god. They made Joshua a god who was in the form of a man, bearded, white robe. Now, some say that he turned into a rainbow dragon, my naga. All right, a great teacher of moral principles. We're talking the law. The Kodo serpent was the ancient symbol of Israel's Mashiach, the anointed one. So this is when you have this Moses. So Kodo literally means raised serpent or raised dragon. Mm. Or lofty, lofty cloud, right? Lofty. Like a Kundalini, right? Like Kun, raise, rise. The rainbow cloud dragon, right? Raised dragon let's go because back in the book of the beginnings again we're talking joshua moses and joshua conducted their people they say with the solar orb around the circle of signs overcoming the toltec powers postulated by the early man so in the toltec mythology Hawamak and kitsukoto conducted their people through the pilgrimage and wanderings recorded in the picture or picto writings Hawamak, like moses wrote the code of the laws kitsukoto in relation to Hawamak, plays the role of joshua and the mormons are doing what man oh they're making joshua jesus man Oh, man, I mean, you know, you get into it, man. You get into the tree of life, right? And then we get into this hung on the tree business. 
Oh, since the Nephites had such a thorough knowledge of the Son of God and the gospel plan of salvation, it is not surprising to find that numerous teachings resemble the true gospel doctrines were found in the great abundance among the Indians. Oh, no, they got their reflection out of the drop that was already over here, man. So thus, Las Casas, a prominent Spanish Catholic missionary, concluded that the devil had arrived in America ahead of the Christians and implanted in their hearts and minds the native teachings akin to Christianity. Ah, uh, nah, my naga. When they get into their... When they get into their... Let's get it from here. And when they were in the height of power, they arrived in the land whom they called a man whom they called Kitsakoto and others called Hawamak had great virtues. This is what we're talking about, the virtue. <laughs> Ooh, press the 130 on day. Press the 130 on day. We just talking virtues, man. We just talking virtues. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I started, again, redropping some of them 2020 drops. And, you know, it's crazy, man. Like, this time I didn't put the links, you know, on there like I normally do. I just wanted to see who was going to actually really asked for the links like who was who, who was serious about it a lot of people did ask for it on on ig you know what i'm saying hey out to the ig cons man y'all really popping off over here you know and in economics you know there's supply and demand and sometimes the demand uh you know isn't matching up with the supply you know and sometimes the supply isn't matching up with the demand but in this 2024 year the dragon the demand and the supply are in balance. Like the demand is there and the supply is there. Like we are fully supplied with the content and the drop for the for the cons that need the content <laughs> and need that water, man. That need that water. You know, um, more than ever, man. And the demand is is is, is raising um, exponentially, man. So a hey, hop to you. But out of you know, like let's say this drop here. I think it probably has, you know, I dropped this less than 24 hours ago on IG. It has nearly like 30,000, you know, plays already. Out of these 30,000 plays, maybe like 20, 30 people <laughs> asked for the links. And then I said, just email me. I just want to see who's going to take that extra step. I just want to know because I already dropped all these links many times, right? And out of all these people, thousands of people that view this thing, over 1,400 likes, <laughs> only four people email me for these links. Four. Four. <laughs> so that should tell you something. <laughs> Shout out to those four nines that really wanted to dig on it and share with their families, though. Hey, OJ Trippin, though. Uh, let's just take a, <laughs> a nice pause for the calls. And enjoy some funny drops. Sometimes I drop some funny drop, you know. I might drop some sports drop, some tech drop. I might drop some health drop. Um, indigenous truth, you know. But flat drop 101, you know, all these things. But sometimes I drop a little funny drop. <laughs> and the funny drops for the cons that just need a laugh, man. Shout out to Radio uh, Raheem. <laughs> and uh, the bro... Uh, Cameron and Mace, uh, Harlem Nuggets, <laughs> drop this drop on this uh, OJ. <laughs> let me see if they let us play, man, because, you know, they be tripping on our net. Let's see if they let us play. They already tripping. I might have to get it next time. I don't know. They, I don't know. They're going to let us play it this time. Man. Matter of fact, just come over here and get it, man, because it, it is pretty funny. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> go hit up the IG. Go get the funny drop, man. I'm out of here, man. I'm out of here. Cause you know they they ain't gonna they ain't gonna give us the. We don't even need it. We don't even need it. Let's just keep it keep it for the discount. We out of here, man. So, <laughs> hey, out to all your comments, man. And again, I appreciate your comentas, your meteors, your prestas, um, because I know it comes from your heart bone as well as your mind bone. Um, you know, your Ruach. I wouldn't even even started redropping all this Yahweh if you if you didn't start commenting on 
I get random comments from drop that was years ago. And sometimes it does encourage me to redrop it, you know, because I see how the inspiration is flowing in, you know what I'm saying? So they have to double R940, all praises to the most high, keep the drop going on this. Uh, I just can't get into the New Testament. Thanks for the confirmation. Hey, Charles Johnson says, say no to religion, all religions. A hey, proper education always correct errors. Peace, indigenous Americans of Turtle Island. Hey, these are the lands. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. What'd you say, man? So they call us the devil, and Jesus crucified is a representation of us. Blah, 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 blah. Already. <laughs> I love to Bill Zedek. He said, been trying to tell folks for a while now that his name is Yahshua, Joshua, Emmanuel, not Jesus. Well, whether his name is all that, if you're talking about the same jabroni, you're talking about the same hijack city, I don't care if they change his name. I don't care what the name is. I'm talking about the function. What's the function? If the function is to hijack you, you can call him Yeshua, Yahushai, all these things. But you know he ain't the real Joshua. You, you, you know. You know, uh, whether you don't want him to be Zeus. <laughs> Zeus is the son of Apollo, a.k.a. Ra, Baal. Everything in this world is about Baal worship, but most walk around on a spinning ball, not knowing shit, wow. just believing lies. Hey, allow a while, man. Two tick rig, what it do? Peace, power, and love to the tribe. I'm looking for this one with the deadly glass. I'm talking about the Dragon King, the Negus, Negusti, the Grand Khan, Khan Dawi. I'm talking about one shepherd forever. I'm like a private investigator in my spare time. I'm on your trail, Preston John. Yeah, we used to say, we on your ass, Preston John. Then we got real respect. We said, we on your trail. Wow. <laughs> wow. The high priest king, you may simply call him emperor. Halawa. Yeah, the dragon pop off, man. Gary Stewart, let go. What they do, man? Michael Eisner, man, Yahuwah. Or Hawa, bless you and your family. You speak truth even more. The spirit will lead us to all truths. A ha. And one more, man. BD Cosmetic 91 said one, one again, or once again, words do have power. That's for sure. All praise to our framer and shaper, the almighty high creator in wisdom for not saying the names of the be bleep. <laughs> all the love. For the most high, the heart has a gift, wisdom, and the brown heart symbolizing the pure love for his hey, That's all right. That's all right. We keep leaving these beautiful commentos. Uh, uh Please, my nagas. You know, I appreciate y'all. I would love to get a few good seconds, man, of the con, natural by law, and cootie mail. Maybe about five minutes of each. We're going to belly flop in each classroom. And uh, you got the links below. So you can dig on the fullness of the matter, the maximum uh, pop-offness of the con natural by law. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you just drop, man, a brand new slap on you, call for free. I would play here, but I already see they messing with my internet. And I don't want to come up the music because <laughs> it would be a bunch of pauses and weird stuff, man. But, you know, um, I'm just going to say go get that for free. I'll give it one. I'll give it one try. If they start jamming us up, natural. Then I already told them to go get it, man. I already told them go get it, man. Hey, this is an amazing drive. Look, I'm just like the next guy. I hey, wake hey, up, hey. I go to work. Let's go ahead and dodge the static. This is an amazing drive, man. The con's been dropping music for man dec over a decade at least, and he does it for the creator. He does it for the tribe. He's overcome so much, man, and his family's amazing, man. So let's get this drive for the disc, man. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> this right here's for free. for free. With elevation and connection to 4D. 4D. Do restoration for uh -huh. syllable meditation. Yeah. Combustible vegetation. My essence is appellation what? and the smoking of trees. Sure. Building on my concentration by locating the keys. That's Pagans the call it divination. They don't want you. To see from A to the Z, these treacherous thieves embedded scenes that intervene the whole plan in our shaping the beam. It's apparent inspiration got me selling the scene. My 
direction, I'm correction with ease. Surfing the wave, catching the breeze. These suck slow. The fans know when I flow, I'm just raising the degree. Ah. <laughs> Told you they be jamming this up, man. They could do it to the drop, man, but don't do it to the cons music, man. But it's all right, man. I done told you they gonna try to freeze us and jam us up. <laughs> but you see how the kind of spin that fire, man. Look at that. They, they, they done pause the whole. Look at this, man. Look at this. They did the same thing to CJ Natural. Don't even trip. They did the same thing when I featured the C. Freeze, pitching back and forth. I see kaleidoscope. All right, man. I'm out. crazy like three hours in a lot of tabs up too so i just want to let y'all know what it is man <laughs> y'all go load it up right <laughs> and get it popping you see the the flame spit a natural spitting them flame arms i'm upset i'm upset <laughs> i knew i would be that's why i didn't but i did yeah they did. I did and they did. But natural got that flame thrower, man. Dragon fire, man. I just gave you a little one minute snippet, man. Y'all go to natural by law. Click the links below. Look okay. at the immaculate drop, man. Uh, the lyrics uh, unmatched. You know what I'm saying? Unmatched etherism. Unmatched comes a lyrical flow. And he just dropped the Ethereans. They probably do the same thing, you know. <laughs> but at least, you know, we can kind of deal with it better because, you know, when it's in the music, it really jams you up when they be freezing because the artist, you know, has a flow. You know what I mean? We expect them to jam us up when we read books, but, man. When we flowing, you got to fall back, hijack. You're going too far. You're going too far. <laughs> Let's get a few minutes of the Ethereans part three. Yeah. Hey, go ahead up now, my law.net, man. Get them natural gems and stones. We belly flopping in the Ethereans part three. Natural by law, you see it, man. Make sure you're in the classroom. Now, it's crazy how it's Ah, ah. <laughs> I'm trying that. I'm trying to dismount. They try to interrupt our flow. I wasn't. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Hi, Jason. All right. Let's get that water flow. Keep the water flow. You know, I could have just made my. <laughs> I already knew they were going to do this. I might have to do a separate drop. You know, right from the top, just featuring this drop, too. Because sometimes when you do it, you know, three hours in, it's like a computer overload. You know, they don't know what, don't know what to do at this point. Look at this, man. Things is happening. Hijack City going crazy right now. But go get the Ethereum's part one and two. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Am I not going to take notes? Relax and take notes. Look at this. Man. Look what they're doing. I could feature all that Pluto and Aquarius. No problem. I say, <laughs> Here we go. Just in that bosom. Yeah. <laughs> we was just digging on that. I'm telling you, it's going to keep coming back. Let's go, Nashville. Let's go. Right. We're fighting for it. Blurry, but it's, it's we got it. We got it. We got you. Cool Delaney. Cool Delaney. Cool Delaney. I can't make this up. We're talking Cool Delaney. Oh, man. Yeah, we got the germs. Numbers 21, we've been talking about. Alright. Let's go. Don't clear up my line. He'll clear it up. Cool delay. Talk about it. see. So we got that little bit.
Okay, so when we get into the etymology, uh, it says the Kundalini has a meaning of circular, annular, and it is mentioned as a noun for snake in the sense of coil. A noun meaning bowl water pot is found as the name of a Naga serpent deity in the Mahabharata. So, this Kundalini Naga energy coiling up like a serpent ties right back to the flow, to the wave. You know, keep in mind we're still talking ether. You know, I'm just showing you the connection because once that crystal, that clear quartz hits you, man, that vision is going to take off. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now that we got Coiled serpent This was expressed Right, you take this force This ether And you basically come here To harness this energy You take as much time as you need Or as much time as you're allotted um, And you charge up In hopes to power up Your transformation so when you release this energy, this Dracon energy back, you can shoot across the ether as an element. Bang. The same way you came, right? There is no real such thing as death because that which makes you you within still exists. Mm -hmm. Body may be retired, but the you within you exists. It still is. There's no stopping that. All right. Rainbow dragon. You gotta keep in mind. It's a connection that can never be forgotten because the same thing that's breathing air into us that we are breathing from is connecting us by that very breath so if we're pulling on that then the 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 force being given to us is that connection you know whatever's powering the sun and sourcing the sun whatever is giving us that energy if we're able to take it and harmonize with it and not need anything synthetically to, to coexist. Well, there is no separation between that which created the source of the sun and you partaking in the use of it. All right. So, in the leaving or the achievement of this serpent energy, it allows you to be the meteor again. You become the meteor once again. God. We're gonna see how this was expressed and displayed in ancient America. Shalom to the tribe. <laughs> have an image of the snake's mound, serpent's mound, I mean, of Ohio, right? Now, if you take this serpent mound and you keep in mind the Shekinah, Akasha, ether energy, especially when you are talking ley lines, Dracon lines, sacred energy centers that possess great energy of the earth natural free energy okay this is why these things are studied so much because they were created in harmony with the working flowing ether and its display is an expression 
of this highly achievable knowing, right? And you look at the design, you're, you're, you're starting out as the spiral. And as you stretch out, you get all the way up to what it would look like the, the, the mouth or the head of the snake and this egg. This egg or this meteor. And remember, keep in mind when we were digging on the hieroglyphic, the letters of the Hebrew script, it had the snake wrapped around the egg. So if you're seeing this as an egg shape, you're seeing the same energy. And this energy is the Akasha. It is the Shekinah. This is the Kundalini. The so-called serpent energy. This is nothing but energy. And kind of natural by law. You know, these Chinese dragons look very similar to this as well. And they said they had that pearl in their mouth that symbolized them eating the moon or eating the or egg. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Let's go for it. From the sun. Uh. This is how your DNA spirals transmitting that light into usable energy Bang. by way of your skin all right just a, a an idea of how it looks on the hill very spread out i'm sure but peep it Wow, full moon rise positions again. The dragon with the pearl. The dragon's pearl. Hey, it don't get no realer than this man surfing away with you. The barrier, you know what I mean? Uh, four, three, two. Remember the number of scales they say with the Chinese dragon? 711. Seven plus one is nine. Back to the spiral. Back to the spiral. So it all begins with the spiral and it ends with the spiral. You know, it all comes back. Spiral up, you spiral down, that's up to you. But why just tells you to make a choice? A why just tells us to choose up, God. Oh, we're almost at the four hour mark. <laughs> this is maximum pop offness. Uh, <laughs> oh, I mean, in full effect, man and out of which develop such high art centers as those of the Maya. On one side, the Mayanists were convinced that all Mesoamerican civilizations originated with the Maya. Remember, it's the same people that were still in the same area and the calendars... Hey, Curimeo, take the wheel. Hey, we got Nat, we got Curimeo. <laughs> hey, are you not entertained? You sitting there, you enjoying the flow. Let's get it, man. We're making the greatest dismount of all time. Let's go, man. We're talking all max, huh? We're talking the Shishia, the Western She. We're talking indigenous cons. We're talking the Mormon, Book of Mormon, the Lamanites. <laughs> Let's get it. Goody man. Hey, make sure you're in the classroom of Ahau. Take notes. Get the babies out the bathwater. Khan's been doing it for a great number of years, man. And all can appreciate it. Da da Kurimeo. Let go. I said, let go. Who are the all men who disappear? But those heads look just like you.
Oh, and this is uh, this is part one. Yeah, he got a part two up there. This is a couple of months ago, so I'm over here just can't prove it. Can't. All my candidate, my candidate, you know, it's just you know, they're gonna try to, you know, it's a continuation. They attack Sterling's theory and deny the very existence of ancient Olmec, or would at most concede that they were a minor, a minor, a late, and then the branch of the Maya. Arguing against them were Mexican archaeologists, Alonso Caso, who had reconstructed the ruins of Alban and Miguel Covarrubias joined by a small band of American scholars. The fact that some pieces had been found, a stele known as Tel C, and a small jade statue in the shape of a duck with hieroglyphic writing, and a date that preceded Maya civilization was dismissed by the Mayanists. The date and glyphs might have been carved later. Ran Argument. Not until the mid 1950s when radiocarbon dating of La Venta artifacts provided irrefutable proof of Olmec antiquity and importance was the existence of their civilization widely accepted. Again, we got to go with their uh, carbon datings. Recognition as the mother culture of Mesoamerica came late to the Olmec. All right, so called Olmec. That's not their name. Of all the Olmec ceremonial centers, none exceeds La Venta in impressiveness. It has been called the glory of the ancient Olmec. It stands on an isolated hey. sandy island, two miles square, which rises some 40 feet above the surrounding swampland and the tidal Tonala River. The ceremonial precincts lie roughly in the center of the island and are made up of a sunken plaza and pyramid, including one whose shape is unique in all the New World. Rising some 103 feet above the rectangular site, it dominates the other structures and may have originally looked like a fluted volcanic cone. It was artificially built of 3.5 million cubic feet of clay. Some scholars have suggested that the Venta sprang right. from the volcanic Tustala Mountains, and that this pyramid commemorates their ancestral origins. Ooh, now that's a deep one. An origin Ooh. to the shape of pyramids? Because people coming out of volcanoes or mountains, huh? <laughs> that's not over there on that side of the world. Whatever the inspiration may have been, the pyramid exemplifies the sheer monumentality of Leo. Don't stop the track. construction and the unlimited man hours of backbreaking labor that went into it. What is true of their building is equally true of their sculpture. The large pieces are characterized by an imposing massiveness. At La Venta, Sterling found four colossal heads, each weighing as much as 20 tons, and a giant stele that weighed 50 tons and stood 14 feet tall. Seven altars, one of which measured 11 and a half feet in length and more than five feet in height, were also unearthed, rectangular in shape and carved with figures and scenes. These stupendous blocks of stone look like altars, but may actually have been thrones for Olmec rulers. <laughs> so this is a stone head here, example they have in the book. Uh, this is exploring the site of Tres Apotes in 1939. That's Michael Sterling, remember. He's a Smithsonian guy. He just went to take pictures next to these things, pretending he excavated it. Uh, he didn't do none of the work, uh, all right? <laughs> but again, here goes a colossal stone head. Um, Tres Apotes. And it looked just like you, guys. And all this stuff happened in 1930, like the Grand Canyon discoveries and the King Days and... Uh, you got the August Picard, you know, like, like all this exploration, 1930s, 40s, man. And that happened at the tail end of all these Chicago Wars, right? They look just like you, God. Same damn time. Same damn time. 
Oh. Why so serious? Why? Because they've been hijacking my nuggets. That's why it's so serious. Because they con. That's why we so serious. Because Naga's been out of code. That's why we so serious. How you gonna ask us? How you gonna question our seriousity? Doing the statues, man. <laughs> La Benta? All right. Oh, they found, right? He's not him. This is the Stonehead in La Venta. So again, you guys are all familiar with the giant stone heads, okay? Continuing, it says here, anthropologists mm -hmm. agree that Olmec society was in fact authoritarian and highly stratified. It seems likely that the major centers governed by dynasties with absolute power to enforce obedience and discipline. Oh. Like the Maya who followed them, the society below the rulers was divided into administrators, engineers, foremen, and straw bosses, with a large subservient peasantry at the base. The gifted sculptors and artists to whom we owe our awareness of this brilliant civilization probably constituted a social entity unto themselves. Philip Drucker, one of the excavators of La Venta, has theorized that as such society grows larger, the social structure becomes more rigid, especially in the area of class distinction. Ceremonialism becomes more complex and spectacular, drawing vast crowds of offering-laden pilgrims. Uh, religion? How did such a society develop from the simple, egalitarian life of a small farming village? The probable explanation lies in the bounty of the soil in the Olmec heartland. Gradually, these rich lands along a river bank came into the possession of one family and their kin, giving them a margin of wealth denied to the other villagers. With wealth came power that over generations could elevate one family to a position of overall authority. Mm -hmm. Social transformation which be between 1300 and 1200 BC before Olmec civilization came into being led finally to the establishment of authoritarian rule. 3,000 years after the Olmec lived, their colossal heads gave us some idea of what these ancient rulers looked like. Among scholars, it is now almost universally accepted that the colossal heads, so far there are 13 in all, from three different sites, are portraits of actual rulers. Real people. Real nuggets. But there are few who still treasure theories that the colossal heads represent alien invaders. All right. Now, that also could be true, but not just like an invader, but it could be people, foreigners, ball players. I would say, and uh, if you've seen my Ancient Sports of America videos, that these are uh, like famous ball players. But there are a few, again, who still treasure theories that the colossal heads represent alien invaders whether africans and that's only because of the phenotype there's no proof of them being africans we've already debunked that Cut. as melgar believed or polynesians blown ashore on mexico's west they have the cootie mayo so whether we're talking ball players whether we're talking ancient rules and cons you know it's hard to imagine them going through all that for a hooper <laughs> But, you know, they got statues of ball players today, I guess. <laughs> they got a statue of Rocky. He ain't even a real fighter, man. <laughs> Who knows, man? But, yeah, we we see clearly, man. These are land rights. So that Nagas never forget where they at. <laughs> and the invader never forgets where they at. Shout out to Paperboy News. Stan, they talking tribe when they talking gang talk. They talking tribal, man. This is just a quick story, and we just belly flopping into it with Munchie B and Black Sam and the whole Nipsey flow. But just pay attention, man, to the tribe talk. Did in the store. And the guy that was interviewing Munchie B asked Munchie B, is it true on that story? Because supposedly Nipsey Hustle and Black Sam's pops, you know, was in that store and he worked in that store. And he asked them, is it true that y'all beat up his dad while he was in there? And according to Munchie B, he didn't answer that question. But what he said happened was his dad was so shocked because a bunch of them just ran in there too fast and it was too deep that he just ducked undercover, you know, underneath their uh, table. 
And according to Munchie B, nobody touched him. Now this is where my thumbnail comes into play. Because that fool Black Sam who's a non- those brothers to Nipsey Hussle took that personal. And this is where Munchie B was talking about the situation where his little homie, little Munchie B, encountered that full Black Sam in LA County Jail. Now this is why I get Black Sam his props. Even though he a non-affiliate, you know, the love that he got for his brother, anybody beefing it with his brother, he gonna ask for that fade. And he said as soon as he walked inside the dorm, you know, uh, Little Munchie B said, I'm Little Munchie B from Inglewood Families. This fool Black Sam off top just said, oh yeah, I need that. Now the cool thing about it is Munchie B's a real one, but he's a Don Moe from Inglewood Families. And this fool Nipsey Hussle, rest in peace, he's a real one, but he from Rolling 60s. The sad thing about it is they could have been really good friends, but due to the circumstances of living in the ghetto, you know, they belong to different tribes, and oh. those tribes never ever got along before these two individuals was That's all I wanted. <laughs> those tribes, right? They belong to different tribes and now they call them gangs and even Nip would always say tribes in his in his art, you know what I mean? So you know, like I said, I got family from both sides and homies from both sides. Just like in Chicago, you got homies and friends and family from GDs and BDs and Vice Lows and this and that. You in LA, you got connections, you know what I mean? Every, everywhere, man. Um, you know what I mean? You ain't got to claim this and bang that, but you know people, you got famo, you, you got, you know, you got everything. But I just want to, you know, bring it back to the tribal flow as we are reawakening, becoming aware of our tribe not just no gang not just no race not just black people but what tribe you from and once we get tribal again man that's when we can connect and connect to a tribal code right that brings us back to exodus 20 got us in code most out of everything it brings us back to hawaii our creator and they are defiant my not they are defiant against hawaii Jack City. They are defiant against our life. They are defiant against our breath. They are defiant against our security. They have to be defiant against our security because they are making us insecure. <laughs> they are taking away our wall of protection. And we over here getting it back with our frequency. That's why we got our water flow. <laughs> our young cons are the key. Allah what? Yeah, it's not hijacked. It's the intention of the phantom yacht <laughs> that becomes the hijack. This yacht is hijack free. Went from yacht to you, right? But if you didn't get your yacht or you before you got your son, right there. We're talking about what's being contained right inside your wall what's in your wall you needed your breath your revelation your mama God. they say man nah that's your mama Proverbs 8 she's waiting at the gates Proverbs 8 she says she's waiting at the gates the gates you walk through the door you walk through the gate you got mama and then you got your dad you got security God. security you got why? Why'd they change it to the vibes to get you out of the yard? The why? Wow. Why'd they change it to the yards? <laughs> to hijack the yard. Man. You think the I am that I am is yada yada? No. <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> We're talking about I am to be. Oh, wow. Fifth and the sixth letter, which became their head. Before they just took the breath off and just, you know, mm -hmm. just yeah. And then they put the exclamation of defiance on the wall. On the wall. Which became Yahweh. <laughs> right in your face, ball. They done hijacked our security and invaded, searched out, vanquished, put us in perpetual. Slavery, captivity, man. Wow. Oh, wow, the creator. 
a highly prominent name inside of Hawa. It is the most ancient name for the Kered. It is easily identified from a Hebrew verb meaning to form or to mold. As time flowed on and the world fell apart, different people developed different names for the Father God, for the Creator King of the Gods, and for other superhuman personalities of old. The myths show common patterns, but the stories and relationship among the gods varied from place to place. Oh, wow. The tribes remembered the same general arrangement, but estrangement led to different details. Being out of code led to different detail. Oral deterioration and latter literary embellishments eroded or lies literary lies eroded a solid core of social memory the myth stories showed these common patterns but very divergent embellishments or lies or fiction through this study it is now possible to isolate the old names and show evidence which was preserved beyond the dis this integrating process of social memory or in other words we've been hijacked and distortions of ancient scribes and their literary accounts or lies, we can now determine the original forms. In chapter two, I discuss the Anglo-Saxon aloha with its present form of hello and the curious parallel with the Hawaiian island of aloha. These greetings had strong parallels with Eloha or Eloa, the Hebrew name for God or the creator, Furthermore, as I shall show, the biblical name for the personal God of Israel, here they go with the Yahweh, which we already covered that, right? Yahweh, translated in many modern English versions of the Bible simply as Lord, this name, although not recognized by modern scholarship, is, re is related to El Oa, or <laughs> Hawa, El Oa and Oloa forms are found in place names Aloha, Alua, Ireland, Scotland, Uloa, Loa, El Hoa, Hawa, the OA is Hawa, the UA is Hawa, Eloa or Eloa in Utah, Loa Loa or El Hoa Hawa in the South Pacific, Sinaloa <laughs> in Central America, Oka Loa. Called Key Swamp in Florida. The last name is formed of the elements Oak, O C L, Hawa, O C, Oki, similar to Mana, Oak, Oki, of the Mana, Kaki River. Many other lower forms of Bow. Yeah. <laughs> so, one other word is also important to the presentation of this chapter El, the Canaanite word for God is much used in the Bible. El Shaddai is God Almighty in Genesis 17, 1. Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabak, Tani is the famous quote in Matthew 27. Does the hijack by Jesus as he is hung on a cross or a tree? My God, my God, why has you forsaken me? I shall now consider some of the creator evidence. Kabab El Hawa is one of the most ancient excavated sites in Israel. El Hawa, God created, is the key to the host of linguistic forms, while El, a common Semitic word for God, is well remembered in the Bible. Hawa, the ancient name for the creator, is not. The real reason is simple. When the Israelites were given Yahweh during the Exodus, Dodge the hijack, they were not given Yahweh. <laughs> They talking about some future tense and nah, future past is the same name. There ain't no, my name is Marcus. There ain't no future Marcus called Ya Marcus. My name is Drop. There ain't no future Drop called Ya Drop. Stop the play, play. You just want to put your yas on it, man. <laughs> you got to dodge all hijacks. Get the drop. The new name for the creator, they learn to forget the old name. So they're acting like there was a new name and an old name. No, there is the name. The breath remains consistent. The security remains consistent. You don't need no Yah. They no longer remembered Hawa. If they no longer remembered Hawa, that means they should have remembered Hawa. Not no new name or no new test or no new hero, man. We're talking Hawa. And all these names got the Hawa in it. The Awa, Hawa, Hawaii, Hawaiian Islands, New Zealand, all this stuff, man. Hawaii, 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 H-U-A, 
Finland, Solomon Islands, Hong Kong, China, everybody got it. Hawaii, Kakina, Peru, Bolivia, China, Peru, everybody got the Hawaii, Hawaii. Everyone got the Hawaii, Hawaii. The Oa, Hawaii, all this is Hawaii. So when I say Hawaii is everywhere, and all these names, all these place names, we're talking Hawaii, Hawaii, River in Nicaragua, Agua is Hawaii. The water is the Agua. <laughs> Parallel with the Hawaii, Hawaii, Tenanago, and Guatemala, or Hawatemala, or Ki Hawaii, 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 Joaquin. Hawa Mantli, Hawa Ketkula, Hawa Hawa Lana, Hawa Hawa, or Hawa Hawa, H U E is also Hawa, forms in Mexico, in the ancient Mexican language, Hawa Hawa, or H U E H U E, is pronounced Hawa Hawa. It meant great antiquity. <laughs> they forgot about the ancient name of Hawa. Or we were simply hijacked, my cause. We were simply hijacked. From the fifth and the sixth letter, it's right there in your face, ball. The water, my cons, for surfing a wave in this four hour compilation <laughs> of energy, frequency, and vibration. Nine above the barrier. Stay up, suit up, choose up. Drop Nation, Khan Dynasty, Halal, <gasps> Wah, Shalom Khan.